and welcome to the second of our Uber's Reich adventures. And this time it is with the marvelous Yume. Hey! <laughs> so, her Uber's Reich adventure is going to start on the barge, the as yet unnamed barge, as it's making its way through the river systems of Reichland. Now, as we've already discussed in other streams, it's quite a long, twisty route to go from Bergenhafen, where you've not just stolen the barge, honest, um, all the way up the river Bergen, then the Blot, then into the Tame, and then from the Tame into the canal systems, and then eventually over to the Teufel and Ubersreich itself. It is quite a, quite a journey. Along that journey, as we know, for those of you who've watched the last episode, there's an adventure within an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was marvellous. Um, somebody enjoyed it, at least. And Yume has a lot of time to herself, unlike, for example, Birdie. Um, she's not scrambling around attempting to pretend that she's a barge woman or a bargee of any sort. Mm -hmm. um, she's very much left to her own devices. And when the barge pulls up, again, left to her own devices. Uh, the barge does one of two things as it's making way along. Either stops off at one of the many ports that potentially could be dropped into. Um, that comes hand in hand along with fees. So it's something that there's always a certain level of trepidation with. And the other alternative is anchoring out in the middle of the river. That is equally dang dangerous, but a different way. Not fiscally dangerous, but more, more dangerous dangerous. <laughs> And Blotilda would much prefer to pull into major ports. For example, um, Team, which is along the way where the trots are from. That's one place that, that will be dropped in on. Um, Bloodorf along the way, um, Seedlung along the way. So there's going to be several towns that you pass by. And as we all know, good old Yume is most certainly an urban style character. <laughs> Does she have anything she would like to do on the route before we arrive at Uber's Reich? Are you happy just starting at Uber's Reich? Yeah, I think I would like to do a couple bits and bobs on the way. Okay, okay. Um, Have a drink as you decide. <laughs> well, she she wanted to disguise everyone, but then quickly realized that they are just lost causes. Mm. So she's going to just have to um, make everyone else not sure about the details uh, by creating some of her own. Uh, so yeah, if we could go into places and uh, she can pretend to be other people and drop some misinformation. Okay, pretend to be other people. Does she have master of disguise or yes, some form does. of miracle? So master great, of disguise. master of disguise means you don't actually even require a disguise kit. You get all the benefit of having a disguise kit without having a disguise kit. It's great. Um, you can naturally hunch over, pull the hat in a particular way, do what you can to uh, disguise your own features and make people not be aware of those. Do you have any other... Uh, benefits you would like to bring to this particular table before we decide what rules you're going to do. Yeah, um, so there's been a miracle that I've been wanting to use called salient detail. Hey, salient uh, details. What do salient details do? Um, essentially, um, if it's successful, people can only recall a certain number of successes of stuff about you, and I get to choose what it is. Uh, and I think on her way, she'll pick up a pretty leaf or a feather or things like that to use as those discardable items. Oh, marvellous. Okay, so you give yourself a big detail. Yeah. yeah look at the feather in my cap. Uh -huh. um, or I always use a, a, a handkerchief or, you know, I have a limp or you know, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, that, I love that a lot. Okay, so sailing detail, give it your pre test. Um, um, let's say that we're going to do three in total okay. for the overall journey. Now, that will loosely stand in for dropping in on Bloodorf, dropping in on, as we look at our map here, which of course you can't see over there, but um, <laughs> as we make our way up, we're going to be dropping in on, uh, yeah, Tame there, Seedlung all the way down there as well. So make it Seedlung, Tame, and Bloodrock there. So let's go for those three as the primary, but this um, generally speaks to all of the stops that you make. Cool. So let's do three praying tests. Three praying tests, okay. Um, the first one is, yeah, that's, wow, that's six successes. Mm. Marvellous. Um, that means you can significantly increase, for example, the duration. Mm, yeah, um, that would probably be good. Because you can drop that in. Okay, that mm -hmm. sounds good. Um, the next one is a fail, because I'm assuming I don't have advantage. Uh, um, yes, you do have advantage. Do? Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. Which case? You, you've got your own time to just sit down. Seven successes. Sweet. And our third one? And our third one 
Um, that's it's just one anyway. success. One success. Okay, good stuff. So, uh, feather, mm-hmm. handkerchief, and what's our third one going to be? Limp. Yeah, limp. Yeah, limp. Okay, as uh-huh. our three. So that'll be the salient details. Now, what can the miracle in particular do? Um, so it's a prey uh, slash perception. That's against their perception. Um, we do that. You're that. I'm just checking your successes. And the last one was only one. Yep, sounds good. Cool. Um, and yeah, so they can only recall the successes, number of successes, details about your appearance, and I get to choose what they are. So I. So um, if they fail, they get a number of successes that they can. Uh, they other than that, they don't remember any major details about you at all. Yes. Sounds perfect. Yes. Um, the next one then is a gossip test mm-hmm. to install information. So, uh, what sort of gossiping is she going to be making through the various dives and bars and other horrible places that she chooses to try and drop her gossipy pieces of information? Um, what's the core, uh, let's say, message that she's putting across? Well, so before that, she has etiquette criminal, so oh, that's well. a plus one, right? Yep. Um, so she will try... Assuming that she's wanting to just seed it with criminals. Yeah, And so it's just general dock workers and similar, the etiquette criminal doesn't ping. She, she might try criminals... Yeah, she might try going for that criminal angle, and then if she can't find them or, you know, whatever it may be, then she'll try just normal stuff. Um... Yeah, and uh, so I think the first thing would be to try and get this rumor out that uh, all the stuff that happened in Bogen happened, you know. Um, <laughs> the, the whole murdering of the town council. Yeah, us being blamed <laughs> for all of that kind Definitely of stuff. Definitely was the young Freud naughty Gerhardt. <laughs> um, it wasn't Gerhardt. It was somebody else dressed up as him or whatever it may be, and it planted <laughs> by the emperor. Um, it was a, a case of mistaken identity. It is, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, to try and, you know, get more reasons why they need to send troops down south and all that kind of stuff. You know? oh, so uh, we could use this um, loosely as, if we're just sum it up, um, it's, it's a big lie that is being used by the Imperial Court mm-hmm. uh, to justify mm-hmm. um, certain actions that they're making. Um, that are going to be what, like a mirror of what's happening in Uber's right, but in other parts of the empire. Yeah. Um, as they attempt to take control of various towns underneath the imperial yoke, so to speak. Um, and in this case, removing Uber's right, well, or Uber's right, pardon me, Bergenhafen, um, from the control of its ruling town council and transferring it back to, well, the nobility. Yeah. It's one big scam. Mm-hmm. One big scam. So Uber's Reich is just the first step. Mm. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah, that, that's quite a believable um, ruse. I like it. Uh huh. Um, and then. Uh, might even be true. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and then the other thing, I think she would like to pepper uh, different, like, unbelievable facts about the, the group to make the true details about ourselves seem even more unlikely because we are quite a weird group. You are pretty distinctive. Yeah. And so um, by giving us more stuff, Hopefully that that will get lost. So, have you got any ideas for an example or two? Yeah. Can we get an idea of the crazy nonsense that I can start imagining <laughs> people are spreading out amongst the murderers of Bergenhafen? I think she'd start with things like, have you seen that group? What do you mean there's two humans that are taller than an elf? That doesn't happen. Like, what are you on about? Uh, and then she, at one point, just because she likes to wind up, um, you know... Gerhardt, she'll say, he's not He's not a noble, he's just two street urchins in a big long coat. That's why he always wears a coat, you know. I saw a, ha- a little hand sneaking out and stealing a pie the other day, you know, like, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, maybe linking back to the other rumor, the Bright Wizard is actually a Grey Wizard try- helping do the whole, like, you know, yeah, there, there is no um, bright wizard. It's a grey wizard. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Or the birdie doesn't have white hair. It's actually flower, and she's got you know normal coloured hair. And... Yep, love it. Okay, so um, loosely, mm-hmm. we're looking at um, attempting to provide different justifications for the events that occurred in Bergenhafen, mm-hmm. and as a second point, we are looking to 
muddy the details yes. of the party that some others may be looking for on the road because they are res potentially responsible for mm -hmm. tremendously awful crimes that happen in Bergenhafen and maybe even elsewhere, depending upon how they're also spreading different rumours around as well. Sure. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll uh, do a loose, uh, just a simple gossip test. Again, okay. three of them mm -hmm. um, to seed these pieces of information in. The more successes you get, obviously, the more successful um, you've been. I'm going to c counterbalance it with an intuition test to see how much they think it's bullshit that you're attempting <laughs> to spread. Um, importantly, though, you've got your miracle going um, for each of these at a different level. And even if they do think it's bullshit, it's enormously unlikely they'll be able to pin the bullshit on you or indeed anyone else. Yeah, I love yeah. that deeply. Okay, so what's your first one? So the first one is... Um, Five plus the one if it's ethical. Code. So the question is, do you, um, the etiquette criminals can apply, mm -hmm. but if you use it, that means it will be stuck in the criminal circles. Would you rather it was in general conversation or would you rather it was in criminal conversation? I think, uh, I think maybe it just needs to be in general conversation, mm -hmm. unfortunately. I think I agree. Yeah. Okay, so exactly. you've got, did you say five successes? Yeah, five oh, for the pretty, first one. Pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah. Okay, let's go for number two. Number two. <laughs> That's my first fumble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's six successes. For and I have a mighty zero, 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 oh, zero, no. zero, zero. <laughs> they, fall, but they don't just fall for this hook, line, and sinker. Uh -huh. They completely lap it up like uh -huh. licky cats. <laughs> going at cream. They're like, mm, mm, mm. Yes, all your cat-like lies coming from Ronald, 100% uh -huh. true. Yes. And our last one, as we make our way into the Vorbergland, we'll use this for seed lungs cool. general area. That's four successes. Four successes. Okay, so from my perspective, um, uh, with my little GM hat on, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume this is a little bit like dropping uh, drops of ink onto the map. And the more successful she's been, the more the ink will spread out from the three locations that we've picked out. Um, where she's been less successful, it'll be relatively localised. Where she's been more successful, it will spread out further. And I will assume that the ink will spread out further along lines of communication, like canals, like roads, like rivers. Um, and I'll use that to counteract what I already know is going on with the Imperial Information Network and exactly the sort of definitely not lies that they're spreading around as well. <laughs> um, and... It will butt up and the news will mingle and share and potentially come back to them at a later date. Mm -hmm. The street urchins are called Gobby and Gunter. Of course they are. Gobby, you know, Gobby. <laughs> <laughs> Gobby of house, young fry. It didn't even, no, it wasn't even young fry, it was young blood, wasn't it? Um, yeah, go watch Gerhardt, no, Birdie's Tales of Outdoor City for more than that one. <laughs> right, so let us draw a curtain over all of her not lies. And nefarious, not nefarious, utterly, utterly innocent activities that she's doing. Citizen. Upstanding citizen activities that she is doing as she makes her way through along the river. And uh, move ourselves instead to Uber's right. This is her first time this far south, this far inland in the Empire. She has never been here. Mm -hmm. The furthest inland she's ever got is Altdorf. Occasional forays through Altdorf and around, but they were very much under very tight control. Mm -hmm. When she was running with the Ranaldons, that was again entirely Altdorf based, unless she was down in Maringburg. Her experience of the Empire, beyond what's happened as she's fled, uh, the awfulness that happened in Altdorf, has been limited to Karaburg, stopping off every once in a while, Altdorf, and Marienburg, which isn't even a part of the Empire. Mm -hmm. It's an entirely separate state. It used to be part of the Empire, and you know that. And uh, you've run with the Ranaldons down there a fair bit too. But uh, this is completely different. It's her first time seeing the mountains. Actually seeing them with her own eyes. Not looking <laughs> at a map. Not looking at something that she'd been gifted by another ambassador. Not looking at... A picture or a painting, and they do love mountains and all of those imperial paintings of heroes <laughs> being heroic uh -huh. and great armies being slaughtered by, obviously, them. But actually seeing them herself, and they are not small. As a quick idea, often people think of the Grey Mountains, which is a big chunk of mountains between Petronia and the Empire, some sort of equivalent to, say, the Alps in the New World. They're not. The warmer world is much bigger 
than the real world. They're closer, although not as quite as big as, to say the Himalayas. And the World's Edge Mountains are effectively the Himalayas. They're enormous mountains. Some of the tallest mountains that, that were the real world equivalent that you would probably ever see in the real world. In Warhammer, it's all just a bit bigger. And that's why they have bigger hats. <laughs> and bigger scarves if you're all a <laughs> Um So the Grey Mountains are huge. Glaciers dominate between them. And for all, we're in early spring now. And we've already passed by winter. It's become history. And all around the snows have gone up there now it's still ongoing and indeed the heights of the grey mountains are lost in mist and shadow ubersreich lies almost at the foot of it the great surprisingly defended city of ubersreich it would be unfair to call this town it's pretty huge mm -hmm. the walls are larger than Altdorf's. And Altdorf, oh. you thought, had big walls. <laughs> the walls here are taller. They are high and bristling with weapons. Interestingly, as the barge is passing through down the river, um, and you can see all of the cannons um, up there, Altdorf colours flying everywhere. That's in and of itself interesting, because this is pretty far from Altdorf. You know that there is trouble here. But actually seeing it is quite different to hearing about it. Sure. Occasionally, there is a yellow and blue flag of Ubersreich. But it is most certainly, most certainly, in the minority. Mm -hmm. As you make your way through, you can see not only is there really high walls around Ubersreich itself, but there's also really high walls inside Ubersreich. Some of the walls are so high that the six-storey buildings that are almost leaning against some of the internal walls are dwarfed by them. That's impressive also. Yes. Yeah. As further behind, to your left-hand side, an enormous, truly enormous castle. You've heard about it. Black Rock Castle. You can see why it's called Black Rock Castle. It's flat. <laughs> and it's made of multiple towers. They're all caught within its own walled area. Lower walls and another walled area. Huge towers over there too. And off to your right, a mighty rise. And palaces, further castles, huge noble buildings. Not uncommon to find them trying to site themselves somewhere high. Most often because, well, you get to look down on everyone, don't they? Um, but also because it's relatively defensive. Mm -hmm. uh, you get the best views up there. There's some impressive buildings here. In fact, this entire place is just bigger than you expected, yeah. in general. You were half expecting a small town yeah. when you got here. Turns out the opposite is the case. You've memories of reading censuses. And the census for Ubersreich, as far as you were aware, was under 10,000, as you can recall. Mm -hmm. I reckon that's nonsense. Mm -hmm. That's almost certainly some form of taxpaying <laughs> uh, census uh -huh. or equivalent. I mean, that, that large huge, long uh, slum that's sitting over there. You've lived in the slums of Altdorf. You've been in there, mm -hmm. and you know that they've no idea how many people live in those slums. And this is not the only slums in this place. You can see a further one mm -hmm. um, over there. Huge buildings all leaning against each other. Almost certainly no streets that ever see the light of day sitting at the bottom. Um, they, 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 their population is probably in thousands alone. Yeah. Yeah, this, this place is nothing like what you expected. It's properly large. Interestingly, though, your mother was gifted a map of the place a long time ago. Yeah. And you've looked at that map a lot of times because it's in your mother's study. Mm -hmm. It was granted um, not long after she first arrived. The local ruling family, who you now know are the Jungfreuds, um, <laughs> and you met with them a lot. Uh -huh. But you didn't know at that point. And um, the map of that city matches this. You just didn't realise yeah. what the map was showing. Uh -huh. And the map was showing a properly enormous place. Uh -huh. You know in the right claim that it's called a city because it has a high temple of Sigmar and multiple other temples as well. That's all it requires to be called a city. In your head, you can't help but think of the word city to mean just big, bloody place. Though. Uh -huh. The barge eventually settles in uh, to one of the many jetties that are pushing out into the 
ruddy red waters of the Teufel River. Apparently, this is one of Blotilda's friends, associates, some equivalent, and she's completely convinced that everything will be fine and they'll be able to dock there for as long as possible. Uh, Gerhardt has already made it known multiple times, and not just when he was down below decks whining, that he intends to go and see his father. You're quite convinced that's most of the reason why he's whining. Mm. <laughs> it's not. That, that's just a nice way of reflecting on it. We know the real reason he was really upset because of what happened in Bergen happened. Mm -hmm. It was awful. Yeah. The confrontation of something that is almost the boogeyman, something that isn't real, mm -hmm. something that people talk about as being the great foe, something to be worried about, a big bulging eye out of some sort of summoning circle, purple and green and feathers and colours and ah, and magic and, and, and singing. Ah! It was horrific. Mm -hmm. Demons, actual demons, horrific. She stabbed at it. She hasn't really taken time to actually consider just how awful that was. Yeah. <laughs> because to do so is to become Gerhard. Nobody wants that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's fine, I'm hurt. There isn't um, another string instrument for her to play. <laughs> quite. <clears throat> so, loosely, there is an expectation that clearly, uh, as the vessel arrives, Yumi will become... Well, Yumi and will slip off somewhere. What's her plan? I mean, I think for her, it would be quite overwhelming, to say the least. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not what she expected it to be, even from, you know, the stories that Gerhard and Leopold, I'm sure, told her about the place and all that kind of stuff. It just doesn't match up to the image she had in her head, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, like, back in Nippon, things like mountains have spirits in them mm -hmm. and they're looming over her, I think adding that extra like heaviness, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to her. She might not want to show it to the group, but she might want to take some time to herself because there isn't really a place for her to go to. Like, oh, no, I, no, that's cool. So, um, so rather than you ain't seen me right to slip off, you ain't seen me right to, to, to just slip off to the, like, the front of the boat or the under Yeah. You. Um, into the hold or some equivalent just to uh -huh. spend some time by herself. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Do yourself. And you ain't seen me, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's a success. Superb. So as far as everyone else is concerned, Yume has gone off to do the things that Yume is prone to do whenever she arrives at any form of urban environment. And that's sneak off, do her thing, um, sneak back, pop up before the vessel goes and go, no, don't worry, I'm here. Um, as everyone's like, or, is Yume here? Right! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly that. But instead, um, it's the opposite. As Birdie runs off to do her things, as the next day arrives and Gerhardt runs off to do his thing mm -hmm. with um, Alamenowai, as Leopold, who knows this place very well, goes off to do his things. Um, as uh, Elric wanders off to do his stuff, you're the one that's left alone on the boat for a change. Yeah. Sorry, apparently you're not allowed to call her boat. It's a barge. Barge. <laughs> um, leaving you on the barge. So what's her general uh, plan, mindset? What's she thinking? I think she's uh, watching each person kind of get ready and going and maybe, you know, whispering in her own head, really, a, a prayer to maybe the mountains to look over them as they do their own stuff. Yep, I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then once the boat is cleared out, hopefully maybe her fox spirit will show up and she'll get some company uh, and she has a few things she needs to do. She, we've been talking about, um, her sword needing maintenance and I don't think she's really had that much time to do it. So, you know, that kind of thing and just processing stuff. There's been a lot going on. <laughs> no, no, that's fair. So, uh... A mixture of prayer, um, reflection, yeah, polishing, um, consideration, polishing her. Um, uh, needs to be oiled very mm -hmm. carefully. Oiled the spirit needs to be prayed to, um, needs to be thanked. Yeah. Um, you haven't really sat down and done everything that you should do. It's not that you're an irresponsible person. It's 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 more that you've been massively stressed. Yeah. It's also not something to do around people, and you don't get much privacy in a barge, you know? Like, No, it's the truth. Um, this is probably almost her first time being 
actually properly alone for a while. On the barge by herself, Blathilda, the only other person who is left in the uh, surroundings, um, will pop off and speak to her also. Her friends, there's some people that she needs to speak to in the adjoining warehouses. She's got others around. Apparently she's lived here for a while. Yeah. Uh, and indeed, this uh, jetty has only got a single barge on it. There is no others. A, a piece of heraldry at the far end, um, which is disturbingly close to the Teugen, um Rose, mm -hmm. but not quite the same. It's got an extra petal, makes all the difference. <laughs> um, and that extra petal, if anything, uh, reminds her of many of the uh, heraldic symbols, for want of a better description, that come from her homeland as well. Um, it's a stylized, simple symbol, so it does nothing more than, again, remind her of almost childhood versions of home. Mm. Because it's been a long time since she was back in Nippon. Yeah, and Nippon also has, you know, some very characteristic mountains and yeah, things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, where these ones are just uniformly grey, oppressive, and looking down with an almost disapproving stare. Mm. Trees occasionally popping up from the midst of the mists between them. Um, but they're distant and it's difficult not to say hollow. Mm. You know that that's why your parents were here. They do things differently here. And back home, things are difficult. There are religious issues, mm -hmm. schisms. And your father is at the heart of much of it, as is your mother from two very different sides. And this union chose to fled and come here to see if there was potentially answers to be found here to resolve the issues they have at home. We're not strictly sure what those answers are, what they were looking for, but you're broadly aware it was so important that they pretty much hiked you halfway around the world rather than leave you over. It's a contemplative few days, I think. Mm -hmm. Time for her to pray over the sorrow, to thank the spirit, to sit and just not relax. Consider, perhaps. Mm. Try and empty yourself of everything that's occurred. Her father would want her to write a poem. He would, wouldn't he? Yeah. Does she? Um. And the other question, do you have composed poetry? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's going to be a fine poem if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Did Gerhard take his loot? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he didn't. He left it. Uh, well, so she has played like shamisen, the like Japanese. Very similar, yes. Maybe she could compose like r play something on that instead because she, she's not good at poetry um <clears throat> gerhardt would not be appalled to know what she is doing to his instrument that didn't come out the way i intended <laughs> <laughs> while he's away uh not at all uh but nevertheless it's um if anything it's 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 more of a distraction rather than a resolution to anything because it frustrates more than it helps because yeah. the sound is wrong. Yeah. The the tuning on it is so vastly different um, that it requires quite a bit of retuning. Yeah. Oh, he's going <laughs> to love that. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out the Japanese tuning very different uh -huh. to the good old empire's mu musical notation system. Um, uh, 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 yeah. Oh, that almost sounds all right. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Oh, you could maybe get something out of this. Her heart won't be appalled at all. But you can just hide it back in <laughs> his little corner below decks. He'll never notice until he tries to play it again. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, Hilda returns. Um, she's uh, concerned about how long everything's going to be, that our conversation's going to be relatively loose along that, how long do you think everyone's going to be? You've no idea. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 
uh, you know, girl, is he going to be up there for long? We're we talking days or weeks. I mean, I'm going to be all right for maybe a week or so, but after that, they're going to be asking questions. Maybe you want some coins. Any idea at all? Anyone? No, all right. Her conversation is as um, uh, empty as that. She's obviously concerned. She'll say a few things, but she's not sleeping on the boat itself. Um, sorry. Bar. The bar. <laughs> You have time to not only contemplate your sword, but also that other thing you've got hidden away. Your seal. You've got three of them. Your mother's, your father's, and yours. Your seal. It's lovely little lacquer box is very different to your mother's. In the same way that your father's is very different to your mother's. You carry very different blood. And you know that your father's blood is so potent that it almost eradicates your mother's. You are as pure as they say, as any can be, just how it works. You know you're supposed to pray. But it's almost like admitting what's happening. Yeah. Your dad's gone, possibly dead. Your mother's gone possibly dead. This will eventually have to be returned. It will have to be brought back to the tree. It will have to be reincorporated within the thief. So much paperwork. You can open it up. Um, or is she going to avoid that particular responsibility and part of her life? I think she would put her hand over it as if she could almost sense whether her dad is dead or not by touching it she has no idea how it works yeah she doesn't um and she's aware that she probably wouldn't have been taught until her 18th birthday <laughs> that has yet to come <laughs> <laughs> soon soon <clears throat> which um in this particular case it's more birth year than birthday mm -hmm. and it would be at the turning of the year as um uh Hetson's nap, as they call it here passes you're still months away from that. You have no idea really how any of this works, other than you're meant to pay respects. Hand over it. It's almost a silent prayer to your dad and to his ancestors and yours to look after him wherever he may or may not be. Sadly, it feels nothing. There's no sudden, yay, dad's here. No. <laughs> It's, 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 it's not that it's dead. It doesn't feel anti-something. Sure. It just doesn't feel. And then there's your own seal. You leaving that one too? You're going to... I think that one she might actually open because it's hers. Inside. Wooden shod. It's not the sort of seal that you would typically find in the Empire. And unlike your father's, this feels very familiar. Very familiar. The wood was taken when you were born. Your hand was laid upon it when you were but well, hours old. And you have been taking this out and putting it back for a long, long time although less of late both because you were often out doing nefarious nighttime shenanigans that most certainly were not happening and your <laughs> parents would be appalled by and because you're also reaching the age where there was a certain amount of distance from the responsibilities that were being placed upon you by your family and your desire to have your own life and do your own thing mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's almost a sledgehammer to the gut almost all of the feels because this one does feel unlike your father's one maybe it's because you didn't touch it it's not that you have any right to do so sure but this one does there's there is it would be easy to say there's movement within it as in your fingers feel movement but that's not strictly what it is mm -hmm. it's almost like a spiritual movement that your fingers don't really sense per se but there's movement within. There's a curl, a coil, there is 
a resonance. And you know that if you put your seal to anything, that's it. It's sealed. Mm -hmm. And you won't go back on it. Something your father to your mother would often make behind the scenes. Let's call it what the empire would say. Bitching. <laughs> he would bitch about it because he sealed himself to your mother. That's a little fact all you found out when you were about 13 because you weren't listening in. <laughs> he put his seal to her scheme, which means he couldn't back out even when it became hard. You never sealed yourself to anything. You know it also brings, because you've read stories about the seals, it also brings benefits. A certain, certain certainty of action. Once you've sealed yourself to something, that's it. You're going to do it. Mm -hmm. One way or another, it's <laughs> going to come to pass. And that brings strength. Mm -hmm. But it also brings a lack of freedom. That was where the bitching came in. Because he often disagreed. Mothers are pretty strong-willed. <laughs> and she would use it far beyond what it ever was intended for. Oh, you have to do this because, you know, you have to. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm sure that helped their relationship. <laughs> <clears throat> there, was, there was significant issues there. Significant issues between them. But you know that, at least in your heart, they were in love. Yes. You can feel the shifting, the movement, the spirit within. If you believe all the tales, it's possible it's your spirit. It's possible that this is actually your spirit and it will be taken back. If that's true, then maybe your father's spirit's already held deep within that one. Maybe your mother's too. You're not sure. <laughs> what do you believe nowadays? You're a Ranaldin, aren't you? Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> <clears throat> On day two, the fox spirit comes. You see it padding up and it just trills slightly before putting its head down on the gunnel just to look out over the water. Day three, much of it spent watching just the water catch the light as the sun rises, drops the other way. If you have any stress points, I do, I think. Yes. Do I yourself do. a pray test. With a success, you will lose one. Yay. Aha, uh -huh, success. Superb, lose a stress point. Stress points, as we mentioned before, are part of our Law Hammery rules. They are sitting on our Patreon blog, if you don't know already, while she's recording that on the side. Nice. By day four, maybe she's getting a bit antsy. <laughs> <laughs> Is the fox corporeal to her? Can she touch um, it? Yes, she can. Okay. Um, uh, to her, it's entirely corporeal. Um, and she's aware that others uh, do react poorly if they see her speaking to it or in any way interacting with it. Uh -huh. um, but it's very easy to just uh, pretend to be Ronald, slipping away at the side, as in you speak a little, she ain't see me, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't. They just don't pay attention to you scratching away at the almost purring fox spirit. It looks relaxed for the first time in a while. Aldorf was horrific. Bergenhafen was arguably as bad but in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. Uber's Reich is fine by comparison. It's worth dropping in a few extra details. Since you've now had yourself a few days to see the shift of the people that are here. There are a lot of Altorf troops moving around. Most of the soldier class, so to speak, are Altorfers. Uber's Reich has got its own colours, yellow and gold, yellow and gold, sorry, gold <laughs> and blue. Um, that much is clear. And a lot of that is to where your barge is currently sitting, directly in front of it, actually, and behind the walls of the great tower with a mighty horn curling out of it. A lot of flags kicking around there in the Uber's Reich colours. But they're massively dwarfed by the Altdorf colours. Next, the town atmosphere is really tight, taut, wound up. 
And you see it snap in a few places. A fight. Mm -hmm. Screams and shouts. Fuck off, Altar Bryce. Fuck off back home. The person done is either chased or clubbed. They don't really put up for it. Mm -hmm. Worse, often by the Ubersreich watch. The closest that they have to soldiers moving around. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while you see knights. The same knights that you saw back in Althor. Wearing colours of blue and red. Great shining armour. Just moving across the enormous bridge. One sight you didn't expect. A bridge that was as impressive, if not more so, than many of those in Althor. They've got a massive clockwork bridge there. Steam driven bridges. These are super impressive. But this one is just impressive for a completely different reason. Su super solid. <laughs> really solid like everything here is. it's just proper solid and far bigger than probably the town needs the only bridge going across the Teufel here um, you can see why Uber's Reich is here it's the bridge it's all built around this particular bridge or maybe it's the castle by the bridge maybe one defends the other who knows and all the walls mm -hmm. You reckon cannons alone by day four as you're beginning to start counting things. The cannons alone here are probably worth more than maybe some of these palaces. There's so many of them up on the walls. And were they seized? How much did the young Freuds lose? Just in ordinance alone. Mm -hmm. This place was super well defended and was taken in a night. Yes. <coughs> The fox spirit perks up, starts padding around, perhaps almost a reflection of yourself. A certain level of antsiness. Not just because you yourself are beginning to feel a little more relaxed, um, a little less afraid of what came before, but because there's no one coming back and that also brings a certain level of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. They've not come back yet. What are they all doing? Why is nobody back here? Are they ever coming back? Mm -hmm. Are you forever lost on this barge by yourself in the middle of the Teufel for the rest of your days? You're abandoned. I don't want to be a bargey. <laughs> That's not my career path. <laughs> <clears throat> so it's always welcome when Blatilda makes her occasional returns. Someone to talk to, even though she's not necessarily the best conversationalist. And she seems to be more interested in making sure you say things like bow rather than front. <laughs> um, stern rather than butt um, <clears throat> because she seems to be in a constantly teaching stance mm. maybe she can teach me a knot or two that'll make her happy it will <clears throat> give you something to do it's surprisingly difficult to just do she sits and tries to explain a bowline simple knot um, that's harder a sheep shank a nice shortening knot you get that one relatively quickly because that's just basically a loop a loop and a couple of twists, and away you go. And mm -hmm. she's tie around that one, tie around that one. Got a funny name, a sheep shank. <laughs> sheep shank. <laughs> she's more interested in, like, if I were tied up, how do I untie it to get out <laughs> of it? Kind of thing. <laughs> Gets there and finds all the sample knots are undone, as are some on the barge. <laughs> <laughs> it's What's day it five <laughs> that you hear something particularly interesting from Blood Hilda herself. You're sitting um, at the stern, the butt of the barge, <laughs> um, and your fox is sitting across your lap. All of the seals are safely stored away down below in the hold. You're still carrying your sword because you're a little bit afraid of ever being without it again, just in case demons attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a real fear, apparently. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Um, and Blood Hilda has been busying about, um, and she comes over to where you are. She just hadn't noticed you were there. That was the problem. She would have come over earlier, but you were minding your own business. Um, it was throwing a rock in the water and the splash that caught her um, attention. Look at all the ripples. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Why is the water red? The water's so red. It's not orangey red, really quite red. Mm -hmm. Is it blood? Is it a blood river? <laughs> As um, she looks over to where you are and says, Oh, I didn't see you there. Um, I've got something I need to tell you. I was looking for you. I thought you slipped off into town again. You've yet to slip off into town once. She just assumes that you're not there most of the time. Uh -huh. uh, 
I heard something that I thought you might like to know, actually. She says, I don't know if this matters to you uh, or not. I don't know. If, uh, right, I'll just start at the beginning, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, she says, I was Dan speaking to me, mate. He's a nice fella, all right? And we were in uh, his warehouse and we were having ourselves a giant lovely mac. Having ourselves a grand old time. And he said, you'll never guess what I heard. And I said, well, what did you hear? And he said to me, well, I was speaking to my mate. <laughs> he says, yeah, I know. Good story. Uh, I was speaking <laughs> to my mate, yeah, while I was back at the Red Moon. So he's sitting in the Red Moon Inn, yeah, speaking to his mate. Now, his mate's a big fella mm -hmm. with big, huge shoulders and a big beard, apparently. And he said that he'd been speaking to the innkeeper, mm -hmm. uh, a chap called, apparently, Lono. Now, I've never met him. So, speaking of him, apparently, he was all, all this, all that, um, that he heard there was a party on, yeah? And I, <clears throat> and he said, well, what sort of party? Uh, and apparently, this party is to do with, um, well, what's happening here? Nobles are getting together, aren't they? They're finally trying to sort it all out mm. and do everything. So they're having a party. So Lona told him about the party. Um, and when he was sitting down with his mate, he said, did you hear that there was this party? Mm -hmm. um, and then, and got... then he came round and then he sat down when I was in a barge, uh, well, inside the warehouse, he told me uh -huh. that there was this party. And I said, well, what sort of party? And he said, well, you'll never guess. And he explained it was the whole noble thing. Uh -huh. And I said, well, who's going to be there? And he said, well, I don't know. I, I, I mean, all the nobles, really. Yeah. So I went off and I went and spoke to one of my pals. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she happens, I mean, she's a very good old friend of mine. She happens to be a noble. Oh. So I might have asked her, you know anything about this party, what I heard was going on? Because I was thinking, you know, that might be useful for everyone here to know because, I mean, I'm not saying that you folks have got anything to do with this place, but you're not exactly quiet. <laughs> so, so I asked her, have you heard anything about this party? Um, and, well, she sat me down and she, as she always does, gave me a glass of wine, yeah. Good. An actual crystal glass. What? Yeah. And I'm like... <laughs> I'm scared I'm going to break it, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I'm like, oh. and she said, well, I was speaking to uh, one of my friends um, who I'd not only heard about the party, but might have been going. I said, well, who is this friend? He said, well, she has just visited over from Saponite. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, well, I've recently been over there, ain't I? And I said, it wasn't Bergen or anything. And she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there apparently I've been there at um, some Shaven Fest or whatever and I was like yeah well Shaven Fest yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was sort of there before it all went a bit shit um, and uh, <laughs> just a little bit he, just a little bit said, so um, uh, apparently some Saponity thing fella what she knows had just recently arrived in town yeah mm. um, and she'd been speaking to him and he's going to it and she said, well, you can, can you invite me? And he's like, no, it's um, invitation only. And I was like, invitation of whom? Exactly. Apparently, it's some fella called Olsenauer. And I was like, oh, he's, he's getting a bit much. I'm not sure I can remember <laughs> this. And she said, don't you worry, I'll write it down for you. And she did, she wrote it down for me. Here's me notes. <laughs> so she pulls it out. So, as she pulls it out. So this Olsenauer fella, he's the one who's hosting. And you know why he's hosting? Because the Once Upon a Team is here? Nah. Nah. He's hosting because he wants to be the next Duke. Oh. So he's putting on a big bash, yeah? Mm hmm To impress everyone and say, look, I should be Duke. But she was particularly scathing of this. She's like, he's never going to be Duke. He's, <laughs> he, he, he's like, I mean, I mean, he's local. Better than, say, for example, me mates upon a team. Um, she said a name. I didn't write down his. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and uh, better than him, because he's from Bergenathen. And given what's happened over in Bergenathen, well, it's quite possible we're going to try and become the next Duke here. Wow. And I was like, what? So they take both of them? And I was like, well, that's an interesting little um, story, even of itself, yeah? And I thought, 
well, this is, oh, I feel like a regular spy now. Huh? I'm <laughs> chatting away about it. I said, like, yeah, but you ain't heard nothing yet. There's a whole bunch of others coming as well. But most importantly of all, she tells me, there's going to be this, this big fella. No, I said, who's the big fella? He's like, General. General von Dabernick. Now, he's the one who was responsible for taking Ubersreich. <laughs> and I thought, well, he's going to be up there. When is this party? It's tomorrow. And that was me talking this morning, yeah? And I said, tomorrow? Well, there you go. So this party's tomorrow. Wow. That's really fascinating, yeah? Who else is going to be there? And this is the bit that I thought you'd like to know. There's going to be all sorts of people there. There's going to be, you know, ambassadors and... And, and elves and dwarves and, and folks what is wanting to know about what's happening here. They're all turning up um, so that Olzenauer, this fella, can try and impress them all, yeah? But they're all turning up to see if there's any truth in is there going to be a new duke, yeah? And everyone thinks that the general, von Dabenink, is the one who's most likely to be going off to um, the emperor and saying, hey, emperor, this is the one who should be duke, yeah? So almost certainly turning up to uh, engage with them all, yeah? Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I thought, well, that's interesting. And she said one thing that sort of stood out. There's going to be a Nipponese ambassador there. And I said, what, from all the way from Nippon? And she said, yeah, no, no, Nippon. I've not been there. I only went to Ind. I was with the Imperial oh, Navy. Navy. I went all the way around. Three years I was at sea. Mm -hmm. I'll admit most of it on the rivers, but but three years, and we did one big tour all the way around, and I've, I've met a lot of them. So I, I knew what she was talking about, and I said, are you sure? And she said, yep, yeah, Nipponese ambassador's going to be there. And I was like, oh. Now, I'm not saying that uh, your fellas ain't a bit loose-lipped or nothing, but I thought that that might be somehow appropriate to you. <laughs> Just maybe. Cool. And the, is this happening at hours and hours? He don't have a house because, you know, he's not that important. There's apparently an ass that's up on up on the hill. Mm -hmm. Morgan's side. Up there, yeah. Mm -hmm. And apparently it's one of the houses um, up there. I mean, it's not like it's not going to be obvious which one it is. It's going to be the one where all the coaches go into it, isn't it? True. She says... Uh, but it is a big place, so it's good to know. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, I've never been up there, so I, I couldn't really help. Um, you have to go by the big L and S, um, Luigi and Salvatore, mm -hmm. uh, and then I, I think you hack yourself up the hill there. There's not many routes up there, so it shouldn't be too hard to find, um, assuming you want to go, of course, which of course you wouldn't. But if you did, I, I would say there's one other important detail that you might want to consider. And that important detail might want, make you want to go to some sort of costumer or something. It's a masquerade. Oh, well, that's handy. Yeah. Invitation only. But, you know, you might be able to somehow, I mean, even if you're just camping out on the outside, mm -hmm. if there's something that you're looking for, that might be something, eh? Yeah, for sure. And, um,. Are it's there, a bottle of um, cheap wine. Are there any, um, you know, local characters or masks that people like to use at masquerade parties here? Do you have any idea? No idea. It's not exactly my um, style of. I wouldn't know. Um, okay. I just go to, you know, some sort of shop and ask. Fair enough. I mean, that's probably going to be better than, or, or you know, maybe just go to L&S. Mm -hmm. oh, everyone goes to that sort of place, eh? Sure, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, I can take you there. Yeah. That I know. I mean, Morgan's like itself is... I mean, yeah, I'm going to get picked at, but I can take you there. Yeah, that'd be good. And that's why <laughs> Yumi finds herself sitting in a relatively large and impressive branch of LNS, Luigi and Salvatore. Nice. <clears throat> With a man who looks like neither Luigi or Salvatore, <laughs> um, with a big curled moustache, um, is sitting there looking very prim and right, Clander. Mm. <clears throat> he has a single huge ring with L and S 
um, on it. Of course. Um, indeed, a big cravat, uh-huh. and big shoulders, mm-hmm. all slashed deep with black and white edges. <clears throat> he sits on the first floor where it spreads out with a variety of costumes. Apparently, they've changed everything for the event of the day. As um, he sees her, Latilda, sees you. What are you wearing? Uh, what have you chosen? Well, I think I, I've i changed into my more like merchant sort of okay. level clothes. M- middle class merchanty type clothes? Yes. Sounds good. Because uh, that's the most upper class thing she owns at the moment. Uh, but you know, my wallet has been feeling a bit heavy recently, so... <laughs> Why not spend? <laughs> um, as um, he looks up, looks at the pair of you, looks at her and her bargy outfit, her, the tar that sits by her ankles. At least she's wearing shoes, lucky shoes. And then looks at you and says, yeah. uh, Is there anything that you're looking for, Mum? Do you need directions? No, I am here to buy uh, a costume. Oh. How very interesting. She says, and what sort of costume would you be looking for? Are we looking for something decorative? Animal print? Well... A simple mask that one can whip on or off? Yes, perhaps a mask and a cape perhaps to go with it, that sort of thing. Yeah. Are you intending on attending... The soiree this evening, are you? Yes. Any of you are, I might suggest that you wear something a little different. Well, if you insist, I'm sure uh, um, you can show me around. I'm aware of one lord who is wearing mm, sleeves and nothing more. <laughs> of course they are. Mm. I would like most a little them, more than that. <laughs> most of them are wearing mm, their, their finer gowns along with a mask or something similar. Mm. Some of them are wearing full costumes of... From what I hear, and some bought them here, others bought them elsewhere, others have, have been prepared for a while. This particular party apparently has been known for a while. Now, would you like a full costume or would you like something to, she says, your size is rather small. I'm not sure we're going to have anything that's ready. Hmm. Well, I'm sure we could find something, she says. If you wish to uh, dress like a boy, it will probably be easier. Does she want to dress like a boy? Uh, no, I I think I think she prefers being a woman. I think people are less likely to expect her to talk to them and stuff. And there is one advantage of boy clothes over um, the majority of the girl clothes. Sure. Keep you nice and simple, and that's creeping. Mm. Most of the girl clothes come along with relatively wide skirts. That's true. Um, unlike the clothing that she's currently wor- wearing, which are obviously chosen by her to be good for creeping. Sure, yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean it's uh, impossible. For example, if you went for a costume over, uh, I'd say, dress, a nice pretty dress, mm. um, along with a little cape and a mask, um, mask be very good. Yeah. Um, that would be fine, but not so good for the creeping. But if you go for a costume, then a costume can be on easy to creep with depending on yeah what I think she will try and go more for the costume side it might come in hand in the future for some kind of Alamena wife related performance anyway so <laughs> you know double use <laughs> <laughs> no no that totally makes sense um all right so uh I'm gonna roll to see if they have anything that's in your size the chances are low okay but I'm nevertheless gonna roll because it's fun to see what there is um oh wow I can't decide if that's a brilliant role or a terrible one. I mean, it, it, it's, it's as low as you can get. I rolled zero one exactly on. Um, I'm going to say that that's, uh, 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 they've got something in your size. Um, nice. But I'm going to knock it down to there isn't much because it's zero one. It feels mm-hmm. like it's almost nothing. So I'm going to randomize whether it's costume based or whether it is flamboyant dress based <laughs> oh, um, for best fit. And I'm going to keep that on a simple one to five. It's costume based and it's a five. So it's costume based. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. So I'm now going to say what sort of costumes could we have? We could have um, uh, animal 
so we could have um, little night. <laughs> 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 we can have some a variety of things ranging from um, the obvious R1 up to the totally bizarre R10. So obvious would be something, say, like a basic animal. Mm -hmm. um, running up to something totally bizarre. Um, I know I've got one, so I'm going to keep it relatively obvious. So, an animal. Mm -hmm. um, I'm now going to run it by row, let's say, um, a one. I will choose up to a ten. You've got absolute freedom to make it whatever you wish. And sitting in between, we have ourselves, we've got an eight. Ooh, eight. Ooh. Oh, it feels like it should be a little bit special if I've rolled an eight. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, let's make it a fox. Huh? Okay. That seems oddly fitting, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Um... A discarded one, because one of the uh, locals, uh, one of the Brunas, is not allowed to attend, and she had intended to attend. She's relatively slight of build, and I think that possibly, with a little bit of playing, I mean, she already paid for it, but she didn't want it. She stormed off in a huff. Mm. Mm. As he realises, he's perhaps said a little more than he should have. <laughs> mm. What do you say, Bruna? Bruna. Bruna. And he returns. With a costume. Huh. It's quite the costume. You're not entirely sure whether it's the sort of costume you would normally go for. For a couple of reasons. Number one, it's really quite colourful. Mm. Bright oranges. Going into yellows. Big whiskers on the mask and the white and the little black nose. Uh -huh. Oh, it's a really quite good one. Flying all around the sides. Um, And wow, it's a yeah, mask. Boxy makeup on. <laughs> the um, suit itself is a cross between um, standard imperial clothing and a fox outfit. Um, it's a mixture of orange and black and white down the front um, with uh, no shoes that really go with it because apparently she had her own. So you might end up having to either go barefoot or alternatively whisk up some sort of other shoe from elsewhere within the store. Uh, the question is, of course, though, how much does it cost? Mm. And do you have enough to pay for this relatively custom outfit that they are seeking to get as much money for as they possibly can, uh -huh. fully aware they're unlikely to ever sell it again, but have also already been paid for? Uh -huh. So it just sort of sits there being half useless, perhaps going to be turned into something else at a later date. Mm -hmm. I'm going to decide how much he decides. Right, so he um, sees you come out. It's got a big tail on it. <laughs> of course. It could be attached to the side so it just sort of sits there. So it doesn't just flop behind you. I can't believe that actually that it fits. Over um, at the window. Blood Hilda got bored. She's been wandering around. Now she's just staring in the windows and she sees it. <laughs> <laughs> she starts to clap as she um, comes in. He looks at her with this taste dripping from every last <laughs> Piece of his eyes. Um, My fox is also behind me. <laughs> as um, looks at you and says, um, that particular outfit, he says, hmm, costs seven crowns. Holy shit, that's quite expensive. Yeah, that is quite expensive. <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually really quite expensive. Whether you have it or not, you also have the option, of course, of attempting the old haggle test. I mean, she will, but it might be good to know how much money you have. <laughs> the the big with. pile of coins the big that you pile have of there. Coins. Cool, okay. Yeah, no, she'll try a haggle test. Marvellous! Um, cool. Yes, I don't think I have anything that would help. <clears throat> that would help Deal maker that. would be a good one. I doubt you have that, but worth calling out just in case. No, I do not. Cool. So, okay. give your test. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's two successes. He hums and he haws as you're like, but it's already been paid for. Ooh. And I really like it, mm. but... And he's... Look, given that it's already been paid for, he says, we'll do it for six gold and two shillings. No, I can't go any lower. Six gold, two shillings. Will you add me some shoes, please? I can't possibly go around with no shoes. He says, if you wish to pay for them, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I would be delighted to find something that might suit you. He says, normally we would prefer our cobbler, 
to uh, properly size you and create the shoe. But I'm sure there'll be something soft that we could apply. Uh, and perhaps um, a simple uh, white or cream colored soft shoe. That's going to get dirty so fast. It is. Uh, mm, no, I, I think that this is quite enough. Of course, ma'am. He says, as um, he's somewhat surprised to see the money come out. And he goes, are you sure you won't be requiring any shoes as well, ma'am? <laughs> as his um, entire demeanor changes slightly, he feels, he clearly felt that this wasn't going to be going anywhere. He says, we, we of course, can uh, provide you with a good, um, I, I'm sure we could get something for not more than two silver ceilings. I, I think I'm quite all right. Thank you. Well, of course. <clears throat> Will you be wearing it out? Uh, I mean, it, I think I feel like it's a bit too early to be wearing it out. So no. <laughs> <clears throat> you go off into the changing room. You change back into your clothes, and you leave <clears throat> with your own fox costume. <laughs> You're not sure quite how you got here, but you are here. <clears throat> it's quite bulky, much more bulky to carry than it is to wear. Mm. It's that tail, so fluffy. Uh -huh. <clears throat> it's also. A surprisingly well-made garment. It's a little bit big for you. Mm. And that requires a bit of a turn-up. Sure. Down at the bottom of the tights. Um, that are supposed to latch around um, the bottom of your foot. Mm -hmm. um, and be tied in there. But in your case, you've got to turn it up and turn it up again. Um, but that is uh, fine. Because you can just then wrap around and tie in place the big fluffy fur at the bottom. For that big white furred piece at the bottom. Um, there. <laughs> Absolutely lovely, but that covers up that. It's it's a bit big over you in general, but you reckon if you had just a couple of pins, you could pin it in at the back, mm. um, and that will tighten it up just nicely. You ask Butt Hilda if she has any pins on her way out. Um, no, but what we could do, she says, no, we, we can easily spy something in the back of that. I, I can sort you out. She Thank also, you. much like Birdie, has rope. Work, <laughs> allowing her to automatically organise all those ties <laughs> without worrying too much about a test. So, what is her loose plan? Is she intending on storming the place at the eve and creeping in? Is she intending on waiting a little bit of time, then coming later? Is she intending on staking it out right from the beginning? Is she intending on running up, finding where the place is first, and then coming back down later? What does you may think would be the best route forward? I mean, she's not too worried about being able to sneak in. Mm. And then once she's inside, she's just another guest in a costume. It's Absolutely. Very unlikely to be asked, you know, show us your invitation. Yeah, quite. Um, so really, she just has to get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and as long as it's not ridiculously far to go back and forth, she might just go back, get her costume measured, put it away, and then see if she can perch somewhere to to see the ins and outs before she gets changed and goes in, once the party has started a little bit. Two other things to perhaps, to perhaps lend um, a bit more ease for her to attending the party. Number mm -hmm. one is it may be worth her just purchasing some sort of cab. Sure. Um, yeah. And allowing them to worry about taking her up to it, meaning that she doesn't need to wander through the streets wearing a yeah. fox outfit, uh -huh. which is definitely a sartorial choice. <laughs> <laughs> Salient detail. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember me, right? <laughs> uh, there was definitely a fox wandering through town. I'm certain I saw it. Um, so that might be a, a good choice, just so that you don't need to mm. deal with that, and also the muckiness that will come with that, yeah. because the streets are pretty filthy. Um, could Batilda maybe introduce me to her friend? We could which get one? Her, the one that's going. Or like, is it a friend of a friend who's going? She said, no, she's not going. Oh, okay. Sorry, my friend ain't going. It's um, it's our friend, and I, I don't know where he even is. Fair He's enough. probably in like the big Imperial Hotel or something, you know, the really big posh place. Yeah. Perhaps that's where I could get the cab from or something. That uh, makes it's sense. quite far from here. Uh, okay, well, I guess I'll just get it from here then. Um, do you know anything about these Bruners? The Bruners? Excuse me, well, I'll reference me memory. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 
All right, so see that palace up there, the really big one, mm -hmm. the one that goes down a little bit, goes all the way down to the river over there. Can you see those little towers? Mm -hmm. That is owned by the Bruners. Oh, They're wow. probably the richest family here. Maybe not. And maybe in some of the other ones, maybe some of the merchants and whatnot, but amongst them, no, yeah, they're rich. They're proper rich. They're also, I mean, check my successes. I mean, a lot of people say they're a bit dodgy, like, but yeah, they're rich. That's not necessarily, you know, a type of person I dislike. Um, do do you know by any chance the the girl who's about my height, do you know what her name is? I don't know one okay. of them from the other. I'm sorry. There's, I, I know one of them. No, no, that's not true. I know there's a matriarch. Uh, what's her name? Wait a minute. I can remember. I can remember. She's the mother of um, Lord Bruner. Oh, no, no, no. I can definitely remember. She, ca she, she, she came round to Kaseya. Her name's Kaseya. <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> Kaseya. Okay. Uh, sure. I if if all else fails, I'll just have to pretend to be one of them. Uh, since this was the outfit she'd bought. Uh, so that leads on to the second thing that you could potentially do: just hit the town and gossip. Maybe yeah. you'd be able to pick up who the local uh, nobles are. Maybe sure. you'd be able to pick up um, other details about whoever might else might be attending, so that you can just try and pretend to be one or the other. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if I, if I got time, I, I might do. just go... You do, I mean, it's in, it's in the middle of the afternoon and it probably won't be starting until well into the evening. You don't sure. even know when it's starting. That <laughs> gossip might be useful for that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool, yeah, in which case you will go and maybe... Okay, you go do your gossip test. Tell me how well you do. Uh, is this just n normal people or am I actually gossiping with nobles? Oh, you're not gossiping with nobles, no. Okay. Is this a plus party situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. You got um, which all case the time in the world. I crit. Ooh! 66. Roll again so we can get the extra successes if you have any. Uh, I got one. Wait, one and zero. No, that's one. One. <laughs> one extra. Superb. So that's um, seven successes and a critical. Um, so the successes is used to provide you with the information. The critical means that something unexpectedly useful Yay. has occurred. Yay! Um, okay, so first, our successes. Um, let's pull out some useful details for you. Uh, you make your way up and down the Docklands. Um, the Toy Brook or whatever it's called, um, in Uber's right. And a mixture of different relatively seedy establishments. Mm -hmm. And uh, the party is very much on many of their lips. Because it's something to gossip about, something sure. to chat about, particularly because it may resolve the current schism. Mm. And everybody has an opinion. Sure. And the opinion is generally, it should be the young Freuds. Why is there no young Freud there? Mm. What did they do? What has occurred? How did this happen? And a lot of the conversation is focused around what on earth has happened with the young Freuds. Why has this happened? What has the emperor done? But <laughs> I know. <laughs> but there is a variety of extra details on top. Um, the Bruners, for example, known to be uh, a little bit, I think it's fair to say, slightly dodge. <laughs> slightly on the dodge side, to say the least. Um, and the Bruner that's um, turning up uh, is probably the lady of the household. You're not too sure if that's true because someone else said that it was somebody else. Somebody else said it would be Lord Bruner that turns up. You're not even sure if there is a Lady Bruner. Uh, it all contradicts until you speak to one chap. Ah, this is what we were looking for. He's having himself a quiet drink down in the docks. Oh no, I'm done with today. I'm just done with today, ain't I? He says, I mean, it's all been trouble up at Palace. Yeah, I work there. Lord Bruner's turning up. He's the one who's going. He's banned anyone else turning up in case they embarrass him, ain't they? Um, Gutler, she ain't turning up. Although if you call her that, she gets a bit upset. It's Gutl, darling. That is what she says. <laughs> Hopefully a twin won't be around because he's the bloody worst. But they've all been banned. 
but we know what they're like. They'll try and creep in. But there's a party to be had. The Brunos are going to be there in some form or another. Mm. Yeah, so that's what you're going to have. Cool. Um, is there any chance he drops what Lord Brunner might look like a little bit? Oh, he's a big beardy fella. His name's Heinrich. <clears throat> he's got one of those beards that you do wonder, is it really just a sieve for his soup? You know, it's really it goes right over his lips. <laughs> I mean, I, d I don't say that to the cook or nothing, because that would just be unwise, wouldn't it? But uh, sometimes, you know, here comes sieve face. <laughs> anyway, I ain't going up there tonight. It's going to be ills for anyone who ain't got, you know, toffee for nose. <clears throat> so that was a useful um, factoid. Yes. You managed to speak to someone from the, the uh, household itself, guaranteeing the information is almost certainly mm -hmm. accurate. Um, beyond that, you also learned that uh, there is a variety of local nobles turning up. Largely, probably, to stake their claim to the potential of becoming the next Lord of Ubershrike. Mm -hmm. Because who would not want to be the Duke or Duchess of one of the most influential cities and most defensible cities in the Reichland? It's, it's a thing. Uh -huh. You can see they're all going to be coming out. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Would be real funny if you may got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Duchess. <laughs> um, you do hear one other potential uh, lie. Apparently, there's going to be a chap called Fife Roker. And Fife Roker. No, 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 don't call him Fife Roker. His name's Florian. It's Florian Fife of House Fife Roker. But you'd heard beforehand, Fife Roker. He's turning up and um, he's intending on um, impressing everybody with his fine figure, his calves and his leaves. <laughs> Leaf boy? If I, if I do say so myself, I suggested to him this morning, I wouldn't, your father wouldn't be very impressed with it all, just just leave it alone. <laughs> 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 he says, who are you then? <clears throat> as you drift off, <laughs> you ain't seen me, right? As Ranal danced through the various halls and picked up pieces of information as she went. At one point she, another point he, another point who really know? You ain't seen me, right? <laughs> and no one really remembers your passing either. Assuming that we do relatively well in a single play test for the general overall. Yeah, three Super. Now I'll drop a single last piece of information. <clears throat> a young man with impeccable manners who is having himself a drink not far away from the bridge. There's a large, very expensive inn there which you slipped into thinking that possibly you get a different quality of gossip. Turns out you do. He's supping away at a silver goblet and gets to speaking to you, actually mistaking you for someone that he already knows. Mm -hmm. The fact that your accent does not in any way <laughs> resemble <laughs> that appears to have just not settled into his mind. As um, he sits there and goes, no, well, of course, the Graven is going to be there as well. And she is, well, I like her, don't I? Um, she's always been... She's always been a good sport, you know, in Nalm. And I do enjoy going to Black Powder Week in Nalm. It's one of the things that I've always enjoyed. But, well, Maria Alric and I, we just don't get on the way that we used to. Uh, she's very rich now, I'll say that. She's, she's got a bit of a feud going um, with, uh, I don't even know his name. Annoying little prig of a man. Um, Damon Blatz, that's the house. Uh, one of the Visenlander lines. <clears throat> Can't really say that I'm... But you know what they're like, don't you? Of course you do, darling. I mean, I'm quite inclined not to even turn up, if I'm honest. She, of course, asked if I was going to arrive. Just purely because she's actually... I think she's going to make a pitch. 
Oh, she's going to make a pitch. I think she wants to be the new Duchess here, which I think would be interesting. She's related, of course, to the Countess of Nong, which, of course, she'll tell everybody. I mean, how closely related? I think I'm as closely related as she is, but at least she's got, you know, they, they, I don't really know if I want to turn up. I've got a costume, of course. It says, but it chafes, you know, chafes. Mm. And um, well, I tried it on last night and it chased some water, you know, around the old chap. So I think I'll try to avoid it, you know. He drinks. Remember... You're having dark hair. <laughs> <coughs> Lots of useful potential information mm. there. And we will conclude all of this with the last one. A soldier. Now he is in one of the dodgier pubs and we're talking later in the day. Mm. Much later. The sky has begun to darken. Mountains all around. I mean that it darkens here a little bit earlier because the sun sinks beneath those mountains far early in the wood all the way back in Aldor. It's all got a little bit closer. It's candle lit. It's ruddy and dark and it's almost your favourite time when it's super easy to slip in and out of anywhere and that heavy atmosphere, the smoke in the air, the drifting pipeweed and this chap with a big stein which he'd been nursing now since he first purchased it Clearly not the richest man in the world. Big, bulbous nose. Man, you would guess, is in his old age. That could be anything given Yumi's age over the age of 40. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even 30. <clears throat> As he sits down and he says, Well, what you got to realise is that uh, you can't forget. You just can't. There's going to be soldiers there. I oh, know I was um, going to be put on duty, he says. Mm. I'm not doing the duty, though. You know why? They don't want any of the Ubersrikes fillers there, do they? No. <laughs> no, and I'm, I'm happy with that because, well, I don't want to be doing the work anyway. Oh, uh, they might have given me triple time. I might have done it if they'd given me triple time. He says, but I'm not too interested in uh, doing work. I mean, it's, it's, it'd be easy work, wouldn't it? Just sitting outside, doing nothing as all of them... Nobs just wander around doing no business. Oh, I'm not really interested in all of that. But I'm quite convinced my captain's going to be there. And, uh, yeah. She causes me no end of trouble, she does. She's always calling me up. Don't you be doing this, eh, Sergeant? Don't you be doing that, eh, Sergeant? I'm telling you. What's wrong with a little bit behind the, uh, you know? That's what the job's all about, isn't it? Eh, yeah, you understand, don't you? Yeah, well, you don't know what I really heard. I was up in Magnus Tower, and you know what I heard? I heard they're going to be wheeling out the Knight's Pamphlet themselves. Yeah, it's going to be knights there. I don't know what they're going to do. Lance each other? <laughs> A absolute waste of time. I mean, if they'd offered me quadruple time, I might have turned up. They didn't know, did they? No. And don't need me. None of the Uber's right people up there, I'm telling you. I reckon that makes it dodgy. Mm. Without any proper soldiers, you know, proper local soldiers, oh, there's going to be a trouble, I'm telling you. Oh, oh, there'll be deaths. There'll be deaths. Ain't nothing to do with me. Oh, I'm nothing to do with it at all. She takes a slip. Well, not buy me a drink, would you? Hey. Yeah, it costs all of thruppings. Cool. That's fine. Uh, I will buy him a drink. Um, oh, you are so generous. As he necks his one. Um, <laughs> here! It's filled up. Ah, well, just between you and me. Looks around. <clears throat> I happen to hang around the barracks, yeah. Nah, um, you know, going over there. Seen a couple of things, you know, as you do. I heard the general himself is turning up. Yeah? Boys. And I said to this fella, Sergeant, Sergeant, it wouldn't be the general himself what did take this very city. <laughs> He's a hero. 
He saved us from those young fries, didn't he? And he said, yeah, well, come on, Craig, it's exactly the case. And you, my fella, he says, you should be up there too. And I said, yeah, you're right, but they won't let no Uber's right fellas up there. And he said, well, we'll get you a uniform, won't you? Well, I like to say, he says, uh, I happen to have a uniform that better pay quadruple time. Quadruple. Wow. He says, and it's all in hand. So there's no way I miss out on that. I just happen to have myself a uniform, don't I? I'll be up there joining the back of one of the squads. Won't be too hard. I'll take the coin and I'll fucking fuck off, won't I? <laughs> it's going to be a fine time. It's <laughs> an apple. Um, 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 um. So that's what you learned from him. A very successful gossip test. Yes. So what's our plan? It's going to be soldiers. Her scouting out the area in advance might not go the well the way she wants it to, so yeah. Uh, Maybe she... slip in later when all of the initial yeah trouble is past, um, and there's an expectation of lots of people making up. You're aware that if you come early, you'll be spotted. If you yeah. come at the beginning, you might get caught up and then ask things. But if you come later, mm -hmm. that might work better. Yeah, I think so. Just before we go, what time is it at? Just because I don't have my... Oh, it's 6.43. Thank you very much. Not that that makes any sense to anyone out there, but I'm just making sure we stick to our timing. Um, right. And I also bash my mic. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right. Evening, then. In a fox outfit. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Making your way up to a party. In Morganside. Not that you know exactly where you're going. So what are you going to tell your cab driver who's sitting there? <coughs> Chair at the back, sitting at the front of his trap, tap, tap, tap on his horse, sees you, looks at you, mm -hmm. looks at you. <laughs> You'll be going to the party then, will you? Yes, of course. Yeah, opt yourself in. He says, two shillings. That's pretty freaking expensive, but that's what you get for going to a noble party. Yeah. As uh, tap, tap, tap. <clears throat> I'm going to have to pick some pockets tonight <laughs> oh, I didn't expect to see anyone coming from this part of town and coming up to the party he says very glad that I happened to stop here I was only stopping for a drink <laughs> so um, would I be correct in saying that that shoe was uh... pauses he says Griffin <laughs> uh yeah, sure, why not? I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, has she painted her face too? I mean, how covering is this mask? Um, if you, if you have to hold it. Sure. So it's as covering as you make it. <laughs> <laughs> and often if you're doing something, it won't be covering at all. Yeah, she will. Uh, and especially around her eyes. She do you will... have a uh, paint? Uh, yes, she does. Superb. She has a... uh, do you have a trade grooming test? Trade grooming I feel like this and looking after Lucas is the only time she's ever used that. <laughs> it does pop up though, doesn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, that's just enough. So. Just enough, superb. <clears throat> so you're all painted underneath. Mm -hmm. Is it, um, uh, have you gone for a nice pretty face? Have we gone for a foxy face? Have we gone for something that is more relevant to your own background? What's she going for? I think she's going to go for a foxy face love it hopefully disguising the shape of her eyes a little bit you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. work into that and then flick it up with some paint tie that into your eyebrows ah oh, <laughs> love it so you look over at your reflection in the water in the barge it's a bit red <laughs> <laughs> can't tell what colors i use <laughs> but tell though can help a bit i'll let you do it and that's how you find yourself making your way towards it, fully aware that if you stop directly in front of what appears to be a relatively large manor, you mm. would, in terms of the parties that you have attended back in Altdorf, this is low key. This is not a big place. Sure. Clearly, the person hosting this is not the richest in the world. And it's made, if anything, even worse when you look over there and you see the palace. Mm. 
Mm. But you know it's the Brunner Palace. Yeah. And it is an enormous imperial palace. And then there's this small manor. To some people, this would be the height of sophistication. Sure. It isn't. Uh -huh. It is as far from the height of sophistication as you can imagine. And you're a little bit depressed. Fair enough. There is, however, security. Outdoor soldiers. Oh. The man you spoke to earlier is making his way down the hill in an Altdorf uniform, eating an apple. He's leaving. He's already been paid. <laughs> of course. <laughs> He's making his way down the hill. Cool. Um, I mean, does she see anyone else going in before her, or is it completely... Um, the, that has now come to an end. Cool. You're, you're coming halfway. Oh, no! Not true! As one coach comes... Oh, that's not a... Certainly not a cab. That's a coach. Mm. Huge griffin claws holding on to the spurs of the wheels. A big coach, all bedecked in gold. As a grumpy looking man comes out, puts up a mask, the big nose, and bow-leggedly stomps his way up. Someone says, can I have your grum away? Does he have a sieve beard? <laughs> he has a beard. It's particularly <laughs> impressive. Who knows? It could be a sieve beard, but the moustache component is covered with the mask. Damn it. <laughs> um, he doesn't even present any form of paper or anything. Somebody just strides in. Mm -hmm. Good sign. Cool. What are you going to do? Yeah, she's just going to put on her, her best noble stride and uh, just walk in. So, uh, you have... Etiquette Nobles? Yes, I do. That is good. Without it, <laughs> you would not be able to do this. <laughs> Etiquette Nobles, ping! Um, as uh, the soldier out there says, oh, invitation, please. Um, and she'll just look him up and down and then turn around. <laughs> Walk straight on. <laughs> uh, do yourself a leadership test. Oh, That's a rarely used skill by you, mate. But thankfully, her fellowship is high. So. <laughs> uh, oh, no, I am re-rolling that. Watch your boys. And I'm a, as soon as things matter. Um, Love it. All right, let's re-roll that, shall we? Uh, beep, beep, beep. That is much better, yes. Four successes. Um, He just goes, right, your mum. <laughs> As if that's the normal state of affairs. You do have to think, how many people actually have invitations <laughs> in there? As um, you glide your way up to the front and you can see a herald, your next obstacle, who will be expecting to call you out. However, you know, yeah. you after all have etiquette nobles, that at a masquerade, you don't need to give your name. And indeed, it's common that they don't. Mm -hmm. um, and they instead will just simply give the name of what they are. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, the Falcon. Yeah. Um, or the fox, <laughs> um, as the herald looks at you and says, <clears throat> Mom? Uh, Lady Fox, if you will. <clears throat> yes, of course. <clears throat> the Lady Fox! <laughs> he calls out. <laughs> Several turn round as you move into a vestibule and then see the first floor of the party. It's, it's interesting quite small it's a relatively intimate affair mm -hmm. this is not a grand ball uh -huh. it's really quite the opposite this is a small hallway with pictures that clearly have nothing to do with the locals they've been put up purely because they needed to fill the walls so they didn't look empty they do not match they are not oh. consistent so this has been dressed quickly uh -huh. <clears throat> a host of animals, taxidermy, sitting around looking impressive, some statues that have clearly been wheeled in from somewhere, uh -huh. and they also do not match. This is not party planned. <laughs> you are immediately unimpressed. Uh -huh. There is a variety of people here. One man with a big hawk mask and long curls of hair hanging down to either side is sitting um, like so, looking around. You can see the upset look in his face as he prowls his eyes about the place. Over there, um, a gentleman passing through with a huge horse outfit. And he's the knight that rides it. Um, a mighty horse sitting at it. As he moves through to the next room, 
it's quite clearly ridiculous. Uh -huh. A host of lords and ladies who are wearing nothing more than almost traditional masquerade masks, uh, ranging from the slightly more pretty southern ones to big-nosed, weird-eyebrowed ones um, that they move around, just wearing their, let's say, their festag best. Uh -huh. Some of them look impressive, some of them look less so, like, really, you made an effort. Uh -huh. um, you can't help but notice the man you've already been pointed out. He's not the tallest man in the world. He's also not the most dressed man in the world. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of leaves on little vines that pass around <laughs> his body. Um, and uh, he clearly hasn't even bothered with his mask. Um, unless, of course, those leaves that he's holding in his hand are his mask. A couple of leaves stick out like little ears upon his head. Um, you have to admit, he doesn't have an unattractive frame. <laughs> it's just the ridiculousness of the outfit in general. He's almost walking around naked. Uh -huh. um, and he's currently speaking to a woman. Long red curls. Um, a dress that, in your estimation, is at best upper middle class. Um, Why did I bother with the six crowns? <laughs> Why? Um, and her mask, which is it's wooden and not ideal. And she's just like... You get your fucking hands off me. You can't help but hear it. And he's all, oh, no, come on, darling. He said, we could just go upstairs. <laughs> get get away from me. Florian. <laughs> Over there in the other room, off towards the other side, you can see an elf. Huh. Six foot six of her. Long, willowy, wearing the silvers and blues you would guess, of one of the azure. Mm -hmm. The elves from Ulthwind, the High Elves, as they're more colloquially called. She has a very simple silvery mask that's attached to her face. You can see all of her features clearly. Um, she is quite unlike everybody else. Not the way of putting it. You think that possibly her mask is attempting to represent the moon. Because there's a slight curve to mm. the way the light shimmers on it. You can't help but be slightly enthralled. It's got that sort of thing you get, you know, with, huh? yep, as you move, it shines <laughs> in a different way. Can't help but notice that. You might want to do your old, um, uh, you ain't seen me right, to make sure you can slip around without being spotted roll if you wish to do so. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, that's totally fine. Um, yeah, that's totally fine. And <sighs> are they likely to have coin on them? <laughs> Very unlikely. Yeah, because they're yeah. wearing costumes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like. totally. Very, Damn it. very unlikely. If I see some silverware, <laughs> perhaps I will see them. Oh, there's there's silverware. Um, over there, there's a short woman, blonde. Her blonde hair um, hanging down. Little white mask that she's holding. Um, doves, feathers all around her. You reckon she's probably some form of priestess of Shalia or dressed as a priestess of Shalia. Um, she's over there. And in fact, as you look around, the more you see. That one there's got a huge, huge stack. It's almost like a stag's head that he's holding with two hands. What? Massive antlers. He's clearly trying to make a statement as he's stomping around. Uh -huh. um, he goes off to speak to someone. You can hear his deep throaty voice saying, Yes, well, of course, Ubers Reich has long been in a position of weakness, hasn't it? Yes, 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 of course it has. I think it is time, of course, for a firmer leadership, a firmer leadership, where we could take things forward. You know how my father has done ever so, ever so well over in Saponatim. I oh, think it's uh, <clears throat> imperative, imperative that we do exactly what we did in Sapone team, which is take control of Bergenhath, and then we shall do the same here, take control of Ubersreich. We need a firm hand, don't you agree? The chap that he's speaking to, who has a long plague mask on, says, hey, pardon? <laughs> <clears throat> well, you are um, some sort of guild master, aren't you, for the doctors? Anything else? Says, yes, well, wouldn't you like my firm hand upon you? Um, um, my lord, uh, I, I wouldn't like to say. <laughs> <laughs> that chap over there is huge. He's carrying a hammer in one hand. Uh, he's clearly a Sigmarite. He hasn't even bothered with a mask. <laughs> oh, neither is that dwarf. Oh, no, that dwarf does have a mask. He's wearing his helmet. <laughs> Big, huge, bushy beard. Uh -huh. There is a variety of people here. Loosely speaking, on the ground floor, you've got the main hall. You've got one room over on this side where music is being played. 
It is the weakest form of chamber music you have ever heard. And all the beer and food can be found in there. Lots of dwarves sitting behind the beer through in the other room. There are just conversations and doors through to some presumably other room. Mm -hmm. um, it is mostly just conversation. What is Bright Foxy Umi's, sorry, Yumi, Umi's plan? Well, first of all, when she used to go to these things, mm -hmm. she was never really allowed to have the snacks. Mm -hmm. So she will go and have some Straight to the snacks. Snack. Straight to the snacks. At the snacks, um, there is a tall gentleman with a long floppy hat um, who has scarves wrapped around. His clothes are all black and grey. If he pushes down, and I say, big beard underneath, looks over at you. Interesting. Not the sort of person I expected to see here. Oh. Mm -hmm. Snacks, terrible. The entertainment's boring. He says, <clears throat> if I do say so myself, this party needs a little something for a little bit of bizarre dignity. He says, I have not been introduced. He says, would you like to introduce yourself? Well, it does feel like it's a little against the, you know, um, whole point of everybody a masquerade. Everybody is introducing themselves. He says, seems to be the evening of everybody shouting to the heavens. So clearly, you're not interested in this nonsense. So why are you here? Well, he says, um, try the creamy things. They're really good. Mm, yes, please. I am interested in seeing who is interested in introducing themselves. Mm, right. Well, between you and me, who cares? <laughs> yes. Where have you won? Points over. That over there. Hmm. That one. It's upon a team. Oh, yes. I overheard him already. Mm. I wouldn't. <laughs> that one over there holds an hour, he says, while holding his mask. Mm. I wouldn't. Young man doesn't know what he's doing. Over there, Falcon Hay. Do you know Falcon Hay? Well, I've definitely seen... Do you have a heraldry test, see if you are aware of um, the Falcon Haynes? Heraldry test. Uh, that's definitely... Where, where is it? Aha, yes, two successes. <clears throat> yeah, they're um, a very important local nobles. Um, not as important as the Young Freud used to be, but certainly important local nobles. Um, they come from one of the other towns further down, you think, maybe... Stimigan is what it's called. You're not too sure if it is. Um, but an important part of the Vorbergland Noble Network. Uh, I wouldn't bother with him either. I mean, look at his silly hawk face. Oh, why are any of these people here? I mean, Hall's an hour in his silly big nose mask. I think that says a lot. He's just been sticking into everyone's business. <laughs> Bruno over there. Bruno's even worse. The bearded man. Mm. Is, is that the bearded man that came out of the... No, he's someone else. Oh, okay. And he says, you, got, you can't forget, he says, Bruno, you can tell him, he's a bloody big ball. Accurate. <laughs> All right, he's got too much money. He's underneath his mother's thumb, completely. Underneath his mother's thumb, does everything. You know she's, you know she's not even there, but... <laughs> oh. <gasps> he says, did I say it? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it makes sense why the family is the way that it is. Then, you know what isn't here? Not a little young boy. Who would have thought? Well, it would seem a little bit foolhardy of them to show up here, you know? Hmm. So, there you go. I've said some things. Time for you. Who are you and why are you here? <laughs> and he smiles. Uh, Puts up his scarf again and looks around. I will uh, top up our drinks first. <laughs> um, I don't know what he's drinking. I'll give him alcohol. Um, and then, I don't know, I... Can I spot the general? Nope, he doesn't appear to be anywhere. So who are you? You're not getting away that easily, young lady. Hmm. I... Who's our foxy little spirit of the evening? Hmm? Mm. Someone mm. from mm. out of town. Mm. Mm. Your accent suggests that. Yes. I heard that there would be the general here, first of all. General, if he decides to turn up. Bit of a bore, if I do say so myself. He'd be quite decent with the old ball mask. Mm-hmm. Mm. And oh, it's the Bergmeister. 
gods, I hope he doesn't come over here. <laughs> um, a man holding a big fish mask in front of his face. The fish, fish mask, mask is a bit tattered, like he's been to a few of these things and not bought a new mask at uh -huh. all. Um, so he swans up to somebody over there and says, Oh, you know, it would be a lot better. He says, if, you know, we just start, like, the good times people got together, just rule themselves, don't you think? Oh. No. <laughs> right, well, it was nice talking to you. And he pops over to someone else. I feel like this is the wrong crowd for that talk. <laughs> yep, that's not going down very well. <clears throat> and, and what about you? You seem to be quite knowledgeable about the... Oh, my. He says, still answer to my question, tit for tat. Do you know how it is? Mm. Um, does he happen to be wearing any crosses? Nope. Okay, good. That's one thing ticked off. Just though. wearing plain blacks and greys, a big hat. And scarfs over his face. Once he keeps him pulled down, uh -huh. pick him back up again. <laughs> Come on! You might be the most interesting thing I've seen in here so far. Can I ask, is this a good time to ask a lore politics question? Of course! What would you like to ask? Well, I have schemers, so I get to ask yes, one question, do. right? Um... How big of a bomb would it be to drop who she really is? Do you have um, a lower politics test? Do I just get a question? With you speak? get the question, lower politics. In fact, I'm going to roll the lower You're politics. Lower politics. <laughs> that determines what sort of information ah, you get. Okay, cool. You are not beholden to anyone except for your parents. Mm -hmm. Which means there is nothing anyone could do to bring you in legally. You can try. Oh, but, sure, sure. So from the perspective of first, number one, freedom, loosely, fine. Uh -huh. In terms of immediately making people go, oh, um, you need to see perhaps a Nepalese ambassador or something around. That would provide you potential access to that mm -hmm. piece of information. Um, in terms of everyone died up in Altdorf and what there's one down here, you might be making it up. It would become a rumour. Um, does she really think it's going to be, to cut this all down into a couple of just snippet comments, does she think it'll be a big bomb? No. Okay. Um, it will be another rumour on the wind. Um, that will be passed around by whomever she tells specifically. This one chap might go nowhere with it. Mm -hmm. So it might go nowhere. Um, is it something she feels comfortable with saying? That's entirely up to yourself, really. Uh, but it's not something that I feel with it fills her with immediate danger. Cool. Excepting on one front. And that's if there are forces that are out to get her, mm -hmm. and if they hear it, that might be the issue. And sure. she knows there are forces. The chances of them being here are pretty low. Mm. Chances of them hearing it at some point. Well, you know, it's just another rumor on the wind. Yes. Um, well, I am... Um... Hmm? Are you aware of what happened to the embassies in Altdorf? He says... I tend to find that answering questions with questions is considered <laughs> by many to be a bit rude, milady. Mm, well, uh, people tell me this all the time. It's my preferred method of conversation, if I'm honest. Yes, me too. Uh, so, um, let, let, let's dispense with it. I've given you something. You give me something in return. Well, I am. Oh, balls. <clears throat> All right, all right, hello. Have you considered that it might be best um, uh, if we uh, if we just rule the town by ourselves, you know? Do we really need... Um, hey, sorry, Gav, you're talking to the wrong fella. Uh, 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 right, uh, you... Uh, 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 um, 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 nah, probably go talk to one of the, you know, guild masters. Says, right, well, it's a good idea, actually. I'll, 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 and he tries to bring himself up. I will do that. He <laughs> to try and sound like he's much posher than he actually is. Uh -huh. And he wants off. Okay. Really just like that, man. <laughs> I do feel like we are kindred spirits. Um, I, 
I'm someone from the Nepalese embassy. That's not an answer to my question. Well, uh, I am here for a piece of information. There seems I've heard that there's somebody else from that. Oh, really? Group I wouldn't like to say unless I knew who you were. <laughs> he pulls off his mask again. Oh, it's not a mask. It's a scarf. It's a scarf. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> have one of the strawberry ones. Does she tell him? It's your choice. Yeah, she will tell him. Uh, I mean, this may not ring a bell at all, but my name is Ume. Ume. Uh, Koishikawa. Hmm. I shan't even try. <laughs> I think I've met your mother. Once. A few years ago. Funny you should find yourself here. Yes, well, is that rumour true? Do you know? That there's someone from... Oh, I wouldn't know. He says, I don't know anything, really. He says, well, you know what would be really funny? Did you see the boar? The big stuffed boar in the other room? Mm. Don't you think it'd be funny if he sort of came alive? Yes. I thought so too. Shall we? His eyes sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> he walks over to you, Kamala. Mm -hmm. In the other room, there's a bunch of little girls uh -huh. swirling around, and there is a big boar. It's almost five foot at the shoulder. Sam he. <laughs> and you hear a snort. <gasps> <gasps> Several people turn around. One of them even manages to exclaim, Oh my. <laughs> and one lady says, Oh, oh, Tal is amongst us. Then another snort and a snort. And the thing just bucks straight off the plinth. Scream suddenly spread. Oh my, my, stop. He says, <laughs> retreat. Oh, oh, absolutely awful. Oh no. <laughs> it bucks, it bucks, it bucks. Dives around immediately from the other room. Big man comes rumbling through with a big beard, dressed in red and blue, pulls out his sword. Have at thee! And stabs at it. <laughs> she goes, oh my God. <laughs> Um, and from the other room, the woman that you saw uh, speaking to, you even know his name, Florian Pfeiffer, who was mm -hmm. wearing the leaves. Um, she comes out and she just dives on it. Her hat falls off. Her hair streams behind her as she starts trying to wrestle the boar from behind. <laughs> um, all around, people are starting to gather. As um, she's punching it in the side of the head. Um, you can see uh, over in the corner, one noble has his hand like this. Punch, punch, <laughs> punch. And then it just disappears into nothingness. The boar is up on its plinth. She's punching nothing mm. as it swings. And she just looks around. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? As I'm on the other side, the chap who knows. It seems to have gone. Hey! <laughs> People start clapping all around. It was much, much more boring than I expected. Mm. Although, she looks over. I think quite a lot of people saw her pants. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I don't know why that makes me laugh, but it sort of does. <laughs> the captain's such a stuffy fellow. Have you ever met her? Uh, Andrea, I've got someone you'd like to meet. She gets up, brushes herself down, and says, uh, What? what, 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 what? And looks at him. Was that you? <laughs> oh no, no. Um, this is someone I'd like you to meet. Says she. She's um, <clears throat> very important in art form. And uh, she looks at you. Looks. Yeah. Are you guys still? Is it fox? She says. Oh, how interesting, fox. I'll do an impeccable curtsy. <laughs> oh. Oh. She says. Um. She stiffly bows. She says, uh, right, um, I don't have time for this, actually. Um, what was that? Oh, I have absolutely no idea. I'm off to get myself some food. It was an absolute delight to meet you, my lady. 
he said, perhaps we'll meet each other again. And he saunters off. <laughs> <laughs> Does, you may know enough about magic to know that he might be a grey wizard? Yeah, I think she knows enough. She's been in monk court for long enough, and it does appear like he may be a grey. Cool. Fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Quite. appears a bored grey at that. <laughs> Who's Grey Wizard, though? Yeah, quite. Um, he goes over and he speaks to the big boar-faced mast, pardon me, man. Big beard sticking out of the bottom. Um, and uh, you can hear him say, <clears throat> Oh, boar! I would never have guessed. <laughs> What's Umi's plan? What a man. Um, I think she'll just... She was hoping for more tangible information and she's starting to feel like that the rumor was just a way to weed her out potentially maybe uh, does she want to stay i don't know it does and i'm assuming she doesn't feel threatened or anything no, like nobody no, else fine. cares no um, she might... Lord General von Dabernick! Oh, uh, well, yeah, that's what I was going to yes. say. And his attendant, the Knight's Panther! Please tell me they're dressed up as panthers. Well, they all have panthers across their shoulders. Pelts. Uh-huh. All with their helmets on, and the General himself at the front, trying to look as awesome as he possibly can. His hair... <laughs> Is styled up into two twin tailed comets. <laughs> Not two twin tailed comets, one twin tailed comet. Sure. That'd be four. <laughs> it's like styled right up. Big moustache. He hasn't even bothered with a mask as he comes in in his full military uniform. Medals hanging from his chest. As I'm um, behind his back, and immediately people are coming over. Oh, very good to see you, General. You know that a lot of people think that he might be responsible for choosing. Or at least recommending the next Lord of the Marshall. As he comes in, oh no, get out of my way. No, um, you know, excuse me. Oh, very good to see you, my Lord. Oh, my Lord, yes, very good to see you, my Lord. My Lord, my Lord. My Lady, my Lady. My Lord, my Lord. My Lady, my Lady. My Lord, my Lord. Get out of my way. You get out of my way. Oh, my Lord, so very good to see you. No, no, I'm, I'm just getting myself something. Excuse me. Ah, he says, I would like one of your. Finest tales, thank you very much. As he sits over by the altar and the dwarf mm, sticks up to him. Thank you very much. Hands off. Pulls in. Right. Turns around to his knight. Cheers. And takes a drink. He seems like a nice enough dude. Yeah. I mean. He's big. As are his knights. What else can you say? As um, uh, the elf glides in and says, I am so pleased to see that you have made it, Lord General. Do you have any further campaigns in mind, perhaps down to Stimmigan? Pardon? Says, well, you've already taken Ubersreich. I hear you humans like to roll. She says, move from one to the next so swiftly. Is that your intent? No, no, not not, not at all. Well, very good to confirm that. And will you be making your way to Bourne, perhaps? Or maybe as far as Seedlug, a Birkenhafen. I heard the Birkenhafen was recently taken by the Emperor. Is that part of a larger plan? Pardon? No, this is not the sort of thing that should be discussed. He says, no, we're here to have ourselves a nice, um, you know. Yes, of course, pardon me for my poor manners, she says, and looks at him. Your uniform is most certainly the greatest of masks here. She makes her way off. Bob, what was that? <laughs> pardon? Bloody elves. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody elves. As um, <clears throat> shuffling over, big boar mask, <clears throat> we really need to have a talk about this whole affair. And he says, oh, right, yes, of course. Um, Who are you again? Pardon? You know exactly who I am. Don't you even say that. He says his boar. No, sorry, I've got a big boar mask on. I'm not sure who you are. It's me. <laughs> oh, Heinrich, very good to see you. All right, well, I didn't expect you to. Very, very, very good. And he just havers on mm-hmm. between the people. Good use a good Scottish havery word. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
You might go find that elf <clears throat> if you can. She's um, sitting uh, with her hand up like this, and in front of them, her, pardon me, is Fifrecker. He looks stronger than when you last saw him. No, what I was just thinking, he says, I could take your clothes off and we could roll. Do not come near me. Roll, he says. Look, look, look at the leaves. He says, I must be perfect for you. You know, take him one step closer to me. I will be, I will not be responsible for my actions. And he says, I love irresponsibility. <laughs> uh, you may, could she accidentally bump and like drop her drink? On him? No, oh, I think she can easily do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ah, trip. Oh no! Oh. Um, I see. <gasps> my... It appears that you have been mortal. <laughs> my apologies, my lord. It looks at you. <gasps> oh, how foxy! <laughs> he says, "Would you like to dry me off?" No, thank you. He says, I must be dried off by someone. Help me! Help! As she just glides away from him as fast as she possibly can. <laughs> glide, 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 glide. And out. Cool. And uh, she will try and follow if she can. <clears throat> Do yourself. Ooh, a charm test. There's a slip your way past this particular fellow. Oh, God. He's very charming. <laughs> well, I rolled 50 plus 1 because etiquette nobles. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, so six, that's six. Success. Um, yeah, well, well beyond him as you deftly uh -huh. move past. And he's just left going, but I so need to be... Rah, rah, rah. I'm sure you Captain! <laughs> says, wanders over oh, to God. the... <laughs> oh, we really should talk. <laughs> she turns around and walks Sticky in the other direction. <laughs> Um, the elf is uh, over in the other room nursing her goblet. Um, she takes out a long, thin silver stick and then just hitches it and her mask comes off her face. Huh. Oh. Huh. Well, quite extraordinary. It just sits on the end of the, the stick that she applied. <clears throat> it glints in the light. Incredibly delicate. As um, she looks around over there, you can see that the, let's say, the grey cladded chap uh -huh. Is currently talking to the Knight's Panther. Cool. I mean, yeah. I mean, she she'll approach the elf and go. Uh, you have a wonderful mask. May I look at it closer? She looks at you. Your accent is quite different to the rest of these people. Where do you come from? Um. Well, Altdorf. Really? Well, that's why I, I learned works for you. Right. I learned it in Nom. Despicable language. It's like spitting. Constantly spitting and barking. Why would anyone want to spit and bark all day? That is what I would like to know. Yes, well, I think it's uh, very fitting for some of these fellows, don't you think? And she looks around. Yes. <laughs> Are you here for this mess? Are you uh, representing someone else? No, I just wanted to um, watch and see who was coming here representing themselves. Again. My name is Laurie. Laurie? Uh, my name is Yume. Yume. Now, would you say Yume or Ume? Yume is um, her lower class uh, name. Ume is her upper class real name. I'm just double checking to make sure as I record what everybody thinks. Well, she, use, she, she might use her real name. <laughs> My name is Ume. Ume. She says, would you be Nipponese? Correct. Hmm. She says, I've been to Nippon. Oh, wonderful. Yes. 400 years ago. But I was the guest. Oh, I forget his name. What was it again? I find Nipponese a very difficult language. 
would she know who would have been? 400 years ago, that's a tough one. Got lore history? Uh, I have lore in the pawn. I'll let that one go. Uh, one success. Uh, yeah, that's when your family was in ascendancy. Cool. Um, long before the uprising of all the various warlords. Uh, okay. Massively in ascendancy. 400 years ago, tick, 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 tick. You're probably looking at so... Hmm. Hmm. Good bit of thinking there. You think? Uh-huh. Right, let's see. Father, grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> he lived for 112 years. He oh, lived, yeah, Warhammer years. <laughs> he lived for 40. He lived. Oh, you think? Think? You think your great, 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 great grandfather would have been ruling? Mm. Let's call him Daiko. Sounds good. Mm. Um. Would that be um, Koishikawa Raiko? And she smiles. Koishikawa Raiko. Yes. He was a grand figure of a man. I was there for three years. We rode north to one of the uh, Tori gates. Mm -hmm. And he showed me off around one of these uh, festivals. It was not so much a festival as I would have called it. Creatures. Most unexpected. Well, it is a very different country to this. As realms go, I preferred it to this, he says. And this is Peroku. Mm. But at least we're here, she True. says, suffering through until the end. <laughs> well... From what I hear from other elves, perhaps it's not that long. <laughs> the end, I mean. What an interesting thing to say, Rome. Uh, and what brings you here? She says, Now that is a question that I am asking myself. <laughs> she looks around with barely feigned disgust. And that perhaps I have found an answer already. Maybe there is more going on here than I initially realised. <laughs> she says, now look at him with his silly little face. <laughs> I feel like Yuma would be slightly comforted by like the weirdness that she's used to with Alamed and the wife. <laughs> you know? Uh, oh, um, <laughs> she says, holding her mask. Oh, these humans are so funny. Have you seen the way that one walks? He looks more like <laughs> a dog. <laughs> <clears throat> I apologise. Some of these uh, outfits do seem quite telling of their personalities, don't they? <laughs> he says, well, what does that say of yourself, Lady Yume? Ah, well... I am... Um, a trickster? A free spirit. <laughs> I'm not sure of the language distinction between the two. <laughs> she says, as um, the general comes over and says, Right, hello. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I would like to speak to you, lady and boy. Oh, I not. She says, yes, I, I, I would. So, uh, what do you think of matters? He says, leaning in. I know you've been sent over here to overlook certain affairs. No, Beatrice looks over you. Oh, 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 I have no interest in your servant. She is not my servant. He says, and please, you should not be so rude with how you explain these things. You are mm, simple. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> he says, oh, sorry. Have I misunderstood how uh, my grasp of your language is? At best, mm, simple. Right. <laughs> um, I, I'm just more concerned with you know. Um, um, what was your opinions? Um, I keep my opinions to myself, she says, as I suggest you do also, lest you 
won't be the correct word for bore. Upset. I think that's it. Unless you upset people. They upset bore? Says, well, of course, you might say something that would disenfranchise another line. So whatever you say, it's going to be upsetting to most people. Right, it was, as you say. <laughs> says, so with that in mind, and the awareness that everything you say upsets most people, I must, at this moment. Very, very, very insightful, don't you think? Um, he says round to one of the knights, um, and the voice that comes out of it is not the voice you expected. It's female. Oh, cool. Did not outwardly look female at all, particularly given her height. Mm -hmm. A good bit over six foot. And she says, yes, my lord. <laughs> oh, very, very insightful. You should always listen to the wisdom of the elves. And she goes, yes, my lord. And then looks at you. And who might you be, young lady? Do you are with your father? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's one of those. Oh God, yeah, I know. Um, yes, I, I'm just a guest of a guest. Um, just, you know, um, meeting important people and making polite conversation. Well, you know, used to me. He just walks off. <laughs> no, that's what I was hoping he'd say. Uh, <laughs> and away he goes. <clears throat> Behind him come his knights. What is this party? I just don't... <laughs> it's time to go. I think so, yes. Got as much from this as you think you can. Yeah. It is as easy to slip away from as it is to walk out. Cool. In that, not very difficult. Just soon, take some silverware. <laughs> soon the bright lights are behind you. And the silverware is with you. The following morning, there is a large coach sitting at the end of your jetty. Fun. It has no heraldry or colours on the outside of it. But Hilda can't help but notice that. Mm. Is that for you? I think it might be. What did you do? I just spoke to some people. I did. <clears throat> a couple of outdoor soldiers drop down from the top oh, and come marching along. <clears throat> and a call comes out. <clears throat> oh, I'm looking for um, a, a lie to you, mate. Yes, yes. It's, yeah, it's for you. Mm, I'll be back later. Lie to you, mate. Says, oh, is that you? Hmm, looks you close. I was expecting something a bit. Are you sure you're a lady, you mate? Yes, I'm sure. I just, I was expecting a lady, you know. Well, the world is full of surprises. She's a lady. He says, no, I mean, you know, uh, I was just expecting someone kitted out as a lady, you know. She's kitted as um. Well, she looks like she be. What? She says. What is it you're saying? No, 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 no. Come this way, come this way. I better not got the wrong one. <laughs> not again. He says, not he again. makes his way over. <laughs> and you find yourself in the back of a coach with nobody else in it. It's a very nice coach. It's super comfy. Yeah. It even has springs in it. Nice. Well, so, name dropping seemed to have helped yesterday. And the coach makes its way along the road up past some slums and then up to a huge set of gates as it passes through them and the enormity of Blackrock Castle is now in all sides. Okay. Well, Altdorf Central. Yeah. As uh, clop, clop, quick, clop, quick, clop, quick, clop, quick, clop, quick, clop. You're taken through there towards one of the smaller towers. The word smaller tower doesn't feel like a fair description. It's a big fuck off tower, but nevertheless, one of the smaller towers. <clears throat> Coach comes to a halt. On the other side, a chap with a white wig, dressed in imperial finery. Oh, you've seen many of these before. Mm -hmm. Comes out and says, <clears throat> Lady Ume, says, if you could please follow me. Of course. Would you like some time to prepare yourself before being taken to the lady? 
Unless you have a change of clothes, I, I think I'm okay. Yes, of course we do. <laughs> he says, please come this way. They don't just have a change of clothes. They have a variety of different choices of change of clothes. They are, That's sadly, to me. <laughs> sadly, though, all imperial. Yeah. <clears throat> in terms of appropriateness, not necessarily the best choice in terms of being yourself, but most certainly, and unexpectedly, fitting in most cases. What? Huh? 14 outfits, of which you reckon a good six actually fit. They've clearly grabbed everything they thought might be of appropriate size and slammed it into this particular wardrobe. Are you changing? I could get a free dress out of it. Yeah, you really could. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> You've already got yourself a lovely fox outfit. Uh -huh. Free dress too. <laughs> Ooh. That pushes you in weird ways. <laughs> You're going to need some help from one of the maids to get yourself into this properly. They don't have rope work. If only Bloodshilder <laughs> was here. Or Birdie. Yeah. <laughs> As they work away until eventually you're squeezed into this wide dress. Mm. You as well to get your hair done properly as well. It's almost an hour and a half down there getting yourself made up, dressed, cleaned, and you have a mirror. Wow. It's been a while since you've had a mirror. Uh -huh. Don't say so yourself. You actually look pretty good. Nice. It would have been easier about 114 flights of stairs that followed him. <laughs> Carry me! <laughs> Until eventually you're taken to the top. Two guards sit by an arch doorway. <clears throat> the one who's led you all the way up says, <laughs> Lady you miss her, miss her. <laughs> You know, he says, you should really get fitter. <laughs> he goes, oh, is she in? Please say she's in. Of course she's in. Walks in the door and opens up, says, the ladyship's here to see you. The voice from inside says, yes, do send her in, please. <clears throat> For you to go in. Sally comes out. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Pat him on the back. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear any of that, but I'm quite aware of who it is. Do please come in. A face you recognise. Manuel Nast. You first met her when you were much younger. And you were on the other side of the world. And that was yeah. when you last met her. She didn't look that much different to how she looks today, but she was dressed very different. She was dressed in local Cathayan clothes he or she is not she was dressed in imperial finery there's a few details to note one dark hair very tall um she's six one but in comparison to your party not so tall at all no. but she's still nonetheless very tall sure. um her hair is currently piled up um and she has sticks sticking through at the back but nope they're not sticks they're weapons mm. you can see them even from here um you've recognized and seen those sort of weapons before. She's clearly picked them up from somewhere. Um, she has herself on the uh, table um, a jade dragon um, that is particularly well wrought, um, and she's using as a paperweight. <laughs> it's holding down many a scroll of parchment over there. Uh, her table is full of parchments. Behind her, there's cubby holes of all kinds filled with parchment. Paper, parchment, parchment, paper. Over there, there's a globe. Over on that side, there's a big K for Carl Franz <laughs> on black and red. Quills line the front of her desk and inks of various colours as she looks up and she stands. And she comes around, bows, takes your hand, kisses it. She says, Lady Rumor, you look most imperial. Quite unlike last night, I did draw your fox outfit. <laughs> Was she there? Well, apparently. <clears throat> she sits down. Did you spot me? And she starts writing. If she rakes her mind back and she... That... Did you spot her? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Mm, you're not sure you did. Unless she's the na Night's Panther person. Are you offering it? The Night Panther person? 
Maybe, Ume. Very well done. Yes, I was watching her first. He says, why are you here and what are you doing? Let's just get to the... Well, I heard uh, that a disaster happened to you earlier this evening. Yes, um, and well, quite frankly, it's part of the reason. Do you know where my parents are? Do you no, know? No, my dear. No, I have no idea at all. The last I saw your father was three weeks ago. Three weeks. Yeah, I don't know, know where he's gone. I'm sorry to say. Oh my god, your father's alive! <laughs> well, that's nice! <laughs> wow! Wow! Cool test, unless you want to cry. Oh, You're bad. quite happy to just cry if you want. Because uh, you can feel the tears coming. Oh, I crit! Well, you can choose how you respond then. Cool as a cucumber, or do those tears gently well up and maybe one trickles? <laughs> <laughs> you can choose. Yeah, um... One, one tear trickles sounds good. <laughs> I... You did not know he was alive, even? No, for months. I had no news. I don't even know what they know about me. Well, they thought you were dead. Yeah, well... Unfortunately, I have not been given any way of speaking to them or forwarding any information I may have to them, so there is nothing I can do for you in terms of leading you to them or leading them to you. Were they with... No, nope, it's just your father. He had himself a uh, disguise and an eye patch. An eye patch? Yes, an eye patch, which was most fetching, if I do say so myself. Interesting. <clears throat> it was his attempt to disguise who he was, I think. But let us say that it was not his natural territory, mm -hmm. nor his forte. No. <clears throat> By comparison, your outfit last night was nothing more than spectacular. Thank you. I would not have known who you were if you had not introduced yourself. Fortunately, a good friend of mine told me exactly who you were. And I was somewhat taken aback. Would you like a drink? Yes, please. I would love to drink. What would you like to drink? How old are you now? I am 17. Well, I'll feed you anything. <laughs> she says as she opens up her big globe. And on the inside oh, there's a variety a of bottles. <laughs> um, and she says, uh, local or not local? Well, if you've got other stuff... I have everything. <laughs> she says, what would you like? Name it. Let's see if I have it. Um, That wine that people had in cafes. Do you have one of those? She says, <laughs> I have an entire... <clears throat> she says, I would warn you, though, it's plump mm -hmm. and very strong. And yes, I have a lot of it. Well, it is my namesake, after all. <laughs> she says, Cheers. Cheers. <clears throat> so what brings you here? Well, I mean, just finding out that news is a great start. I mean, I'm guessing you being you, you know who I've been travelling with? She says, I have heard that you are if I am being quite clear I did not know you were travelling at all but I know where you've come from and I know who also came from there so by extrapolation I think I can make quite a good guess as to exactly whom you are travelling with yes well I'm sure that puts you in a sticky situation yes it does he says, quite the sticky situation, but then everything is sticky at the moment. <clears throat> so again, what's going on? You're on the other side of the world, and you're apparently roped up into things that you have nothing in common with? Well, I mean, other than the fact that the same people seemingly wanted us dead? The same people wanted who dead? Us. The person I'm travelling with. As your family? Well, wanted me dead, wanted me alive, it's a little bit unclear. Umi. Yes. 
You have a story to tell. Yes? Yes. Would you like to tell it? Or would you like to keep it a secret? Do I feel... I feel like I can maybe not trust her, but she doesn't seem to have any ill will. Right? Um, Do the old intuition test. You just... She seems fine. She seems fine. <laughs> no, she seems lovely. Right, now, uh, let's lay out a couple of basic um, talents. Um, she's got attractive seven. <laughs> that helps. Um, she's also got commanding presence four. Uh -huh. um, quite used to getting people to do what she wants. Um, she doesn't have any uh, frightening or uh, unsettling or intimidating or any of that nonsense. Um, she appears relatively soft um, in terms of threats. Mm -hmm. Um Beyond her talents, uh, she is impeccably well dressed, and you know uh, has travelled the world. You've met her. Um, she took you around Cathay when your parents were off doing business with someone. You don't even know who it was, mm -hmm. um, and she was responsible for taking you around a whole host of things. And you went off in an imperial ship, and you made your way back. Many of these came with you, and many more came after. Yeah, I think she will tell her some of it, but not all. Um, okay, so let's. Uh, Pick out the salient details without yeah, sure. talking it all out. So just to download what pieces of information. Well, she will say about what well, she knows about what happened at the embassy, but she'll give a couple more details. Good. So uh, details about the embassy. Good start. So you know the fact that people were killed, that they, it was. That's enough. Um, so next bridging step is: Are you going to tell her that you're part of the cult of Ronald? Uh, no. No, good. Next um, step from that is, are you going to tell her that you are on the run because people are looking for you? Yes. Are you going to tell her details about who you think those people are? Yes. Good. Okay, so that's details about that. We then are on the run with these people. Are you going to provide details about those people? Chatting about who you're with and all the rest. Mm, I'll keep it to a minimum. Good stuff. Are you going to um, tell what happens as you move down from Altdorf into Bergenheim and the horror show that occurred in Bergenheim? Yes. I Good. Um, and then, upon having said all of that, um, will she actually buckle when questions like this um, come out? You know, when you encounter those sort of great evil. It can cause a significant issue for those who were face to face with them. Yes? Well, I guess so. It was horrible. Yes, it was. I can not doubt that at all. Are you safe? I mean, you know, you've been to Nippon, you know, my family. Has a I'm not asking about your family. I'm asking about you and the people you're traveling with. Are you safe? Because from what you're saying, some of them sound dangerous. Yes, but the world seems really dangerous for me right now. Well, that does not mean that one walks with danger. Or are you saying that you require their assistance to keep yourself in a strong position? Why not stay here? Wait, perhaps your father will return. I... Can I interrupt time? Um, 45. We Excellent. really don't have We're loads close. of time. <laughs> um, I feel like I have something to accomplish and I can't do it staying still. Are we discussing matters of revenge? I mean, I'd have to understand what was going on to even get to revenge. But perhaps, knowing my dad is alive, helps. Say, so that was a lie. About my father. That was a lie. She says, one of my jobs is to find out people, who they are, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I have found out some things that I wouldn't have otherwise found out. And I'm very concerned for your life. Last I heard, there had been a massacre 
It was a massacre that I've investigated from three different sources and found almost nothing about it. And it's currently, as far as I can tell with the most latest news, still in a very difficult position. Now, you provided me with details I did not have. I'm sorry to say I have not met your father for four years, I think, the last time I was. And I apologise deeply for tricking you, but I think that you respect a trick when it's required. It was required, because now I am very concerned for you. There are forces moving against you, that much you made clear, and you're not prepared for those forces. You've surrounded yourself with very dangerous individuals who are also on the receiving end of a great deal of attention, bringing more attention to you than you perhaps require. My dear, your family is very important. Are you sure that you should be traipsing around the empire looking for the potential murderers of your parents? Is that more important than what they themselves were doing or perhaps returning? Well, what they were doing also requires me to understand the way this empire works, the way it has failed. Because if their trajectory is something that we need to learn and not emulate, I need to know that, to take that back home. I have one question for you, just one, and this is going to determine what I think about this entire situation. I'm going to write down two words. She slides it over. Do they mean anything to you? Have a look at it. Purple. So I imagine there's a lot you're not telling me then. Yes. Well then, it is time for us to be open rather than closed. There's a moment in everybody's life where they have an opportunity to perhaps make a difference for their future. That moment for you has just arrived. And it's also to a degree for me. I am stuck. I mean, you're free. I am constrained within a tower at the very top. And no matter how much one might choose to fling one's hair out of it, there's no climbing free. I'm under imperial order. But I'm under imperial order. I think for very strong reasons. Because I also am looking into that particular issue. I believe they killed my father. Who you have met. And we share something in that regard. Yes. And I am very concerned for you. But you are free. But you are free with potentially more dangerous individuals. And they need to be brought to a position where they are clearly aware of exactly what they're walking into. Or alternatively, they are not going to kill you by careless words. Which is quite likely. Well. You spoke to one of my agents. In Tain. In Tain? Directly. I didn't know it was you, but I've now put it together. Mm. In Tain. You passed through Tain. You spoke to one of my agents. I'm quite convinced you were the one that was talking about hair being dark. Mm. And that one hit my table. Well, it's good to know that some of that worked, I guess. That shows that you're clearly skilled. It hit my table. Well, I might have hit some things as well. That being the case, I'm not concerned for you in that singular instance, but I am concerned for you overall. You're scared. Your parents have been killed. You're on the run. You're seeking revenge. You're angry. You're passionate. You're attempting to hide it all under this scheme of humour. I've been there. My scheme was anger. It's almost the same thing. Just a little bit more shouty. <laughs> There's plenty of other shouty people in my group. Quite. I have agents looking for them and I have yet to get any real purchase. I can't provide a great deal of help. At least not in terms of direct aid, but perhaps I can provide a little bit of help with your people. 
in particular, now that we've discussed them all. I've been doing investigations, mm -hmm. not into you, into your companion, Gerhard, and he has a spy, Miss Birdie. Birdie? She is a spy. That would explain a lot. And she is a spy of a force that neither you or I really should be discussing. It is not this particular one. And I have no idea why she is with him. And it concerns me deeply. So if I were to ask you one thing, it would be, can you find out from her why exactly she is with him? Now, I'm going to speak to her. Of that there's no doubt. She'd be too difficult to pluck her up from where she is at the moment. Might I not? <laughs> okay, of course. He says, but she won't tell me anything. Why would she trust me? But she might talk to you. I was fully intending on killing her. But now that I've heard everything you have to say, I am willing not to if you suggest that's a good idea. If you think that she could be a useful bodyguard. Oh, for sure, yes. Are you sure? She, she does, after all, work for other forces. Yes, but she never struck me as somebody who was very two-faced, even though she, as you say, is a spy. She's a spy. She says she's an actual spy. I know, but... An actual spy who has been lying to you about her spying nature. So I'm going to suggest to you that perhaps you have been blinded. I'm going to make this particular decision. I understand that you have uh, an opinion here because she is your friend. She is. There we go. I accept that. You have an opinion. But in person, please decide, he says. I think I will make the call on this one, depending upon what she says. She has done some horrendous things since she's arrived here. Some horrendous things. But I like horrendous under certain circumstances, useful. And perhaps that's what you need, someone horrendous. Mm. He says, I think, I think you and I should just sit down and talk for a while. He says, get to know each other, understand what's happening, and hopefully come to a resolution that we're both happy with. Before you go, I will tell you whether I've killed her or not. Yes, I would appreciate that. I thought you might. She says, unfortunately, I'm busy. I will make sure that you have marvellous chambers. Yes, thank you. He says, of course, that means you're in prison for the moment. Mm, yes. But of course you knew that. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you directly because I respect you. Let's not pretend that it's anything other than it is. You're in prison. You're like, go one week later. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't kill Birdie. Yay. <laughs> 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 I'd like to think I helped, but I'm not quite sure, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she doesn't kill Birdie. Um, apparently Birdie has been sent back. Apparently Birdie has killed a lot of people. That's Birdie, though, isn't it? <laughs> quite. Um, she explains everything that happens in Birdie's tale. Um, so everything that's happened in Birdie's tale, you know already. Uh -huh. So you can reference that as you wish when we hit our next session. Uh -huh. um, and she will spend uh, all of that week um, speaking to you for about two hours each day. She's constantly busy having people coming in. Pigeons are arriving, pigeons are going, pigeons are arriving, pigeons are going. Mm -hmm. But cut it all down to the nubbins. She's a good prisoner, guard, person, <laughs> um, <Host>. a good host. <laughs> um, and as the week passes, uh, she has heard all of the news that she needs and she's happy to let you go. Um, to which she says, I shall provide you with a carriage, she says, and some funds. I can't spare too much because I don't want you expecting anything from me. <clears throat> That's all right. If I hear any word of your parents, where would you like me to send it? Where do you go next? I have no idea, but I... I'll send it to Kemperbad. Okay. Says, because I know that's where you're intending to get yourself your barge registered because I've already spoken. He says, two... Well, I guess, yes, yes for the barge. Hilda, yeah. Mm. Uh, spoken to her. Would you like a hug? 
Hugs it is. She's tall and huggy. Yay. <clears throat> and that pretty much gives you everything that you need <laughs> before you return to the barge with an extra 10 gold crowns. Wow. You've come out on top. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> um, and that brings us to the end of this particular tale from Uber's Reich where she got herself into a party and then almost got her friend killed, but didn't. <laughs> because let's be honest, her friend pretty much dug her own grave. And <laughs> with that, we bring everything to an end.